The San Antonio Sports All-Star Football Game is presented by H-E-B and sponsored by Frost, Whataburger, CPS Energy, Pizza Hut, University Health System, and Sierra, Powering, Hallmark University, Kiabasa Smoke Meats, Lymphedema MD, Ernest Roofing, Sprouts Farmers Market, ASCO, Countywide Service Company, America's Diamond, High School Music Service, Night Office Solutions, UIW, Pick and Pool, and IDreamSA.com. Who says high school football season is over? Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the 40th anniversary of the San Antonio Sports All-Star Game presented by HEB. It's a San Antonio East-West Showdown. Welcome to the Alamo Dome, everybody. I'm Don Harris, along with my broadcast partner, Chuck McAtinick. It's a double header here. Caden Stearns, a local kid from Steele High School, was just named the MVP of the Army All-American Bowl, and now a hundred of his close friends right here in San Antonio get to do battle on the double header. Three of the San Antonio guys got to play in the U.S. Army All-American game. A couple of those guys were slated to play in our game. Wish we could have them stick around to kind of <laughs> thaw out the roster here, but hey, no doubt, Don, we've got a hundred kids that for many years, and in some cases, these guys have been doing it for multi-years, showing off their talents here in San Antonio, they get rewarded by a trip to San Antonio's Shrine game. Yeah, and got a lot of kids that you'll see at the next level in the Big 12, Power 5 conferences, and others, and it starts with the kid from Smithson Valley. Yeah, Trayvon Merrig Wildward. This young man, if I'm playing quarterback for the West, I'm looking on the opposite side of this guy, one of the best cover corners in the area, and yeah, bound for TCU. And again, if I'm playing quarterback for the West, the second guy that I'm looking to try to avoid is at safety from Steele High School, and he goes by the name of Javion Cardwell. Yeah. Can you imagine this guy and Caden Stearns on the same football field? Wow, made it really hard for opposing offenses to get down the field on these two guys, one of the most explosive intercept guys in the area. He was on his way to Oklahoma State, and also Jalen Battles from your alma mater, the Madison Mavericks. We saw him earlier this year on Thursday Night Lights, a fantastic wide receiver who also handles the punting duties there at Madison, and he will be the punter here tonight. And UTSA's got a big recruit in this one. Indeed they do. Spencer Burford, the big left tackle. Look at this guy. You know Frank Wilson is going to love to have this guy on the left side of his offensive line. Spencer Burford is a load at 6'5", 271. I thought this next kid was one of the best kids we saw all year long. Millard Bradford from O'Connor. Safety with incredible speed. Plays special teams. Unbelievable talent. Has TCU and Houston both looking at him. Had this play on TNL where he scooped up with his left hand the blocked kick and took it back for a touchdown. He's a very special talent. And also in that same district, the only All-State 6A player from San Antonio. Yeah, uncommitted is Isaiah Paul and just a tremendous linebacker from Brennan High School. As you see, he was the 28 6A Zone A defensive MVP. There are some scouts here in the stands tonight. And I do know this, from talking to the coaching staff over at Brennan all year long, they said whoever gets this guy is gonna get a heck of a football player. Also, Davis Brand from Bernie Champion, a quarterback, headed to Tulsa. We had him on TNL as well. Long, tall, good arm. His coach is the head coach in this one, and they've got a lot of great quarterbacks there on the West. We will see him slinging around tonight. And one of the guys he is going to be looking for, among others, is Big Ben Sims, the huge tight end from Clark who committed early to Baylor. He has kept his commitment, feels right at home there. So we're gonna see a lot of his ball skills tonight on the offensive end. Again, weapons on both sides for both of these teams, both offensively and defensively. It's gonna be interesting to see which gives. They're the stars of the future. You're gonna say, I knew them when, when we watched the 40th San Antonio Sports All-Star Game. We'll introduce you to the coaches when we come back. You're watching the San Antonio Sports All-Star Football Game presented by H-E-B. Alamo Dome, everybody. Don Harris, Chuck McAtinick with you. We are closing in on kickoff 
here of the San Antonio Sports All-Star Game presented by HEB. Let's introduce you to the coaches. Two guys very well known here in San Antonio. Larry Hill from Smithson Valley. Keith Kaiser from Bernie Champion. Well, we'll first start with Larry Hill from Smithson Valley. He's been doing it for over two decades, Don. A guy we're both very familiar with. And the thing I respect most about Larry Hill, remember about four or five years ago, he had a team that was undefeated. And you know, I really hadn't got a chance to watch his team play much. I was talking to him on the phone. He goes, yeah, come out and watch us play. You're not going to believe how small we are. And I thought, oh, he's sandbagging. I mean, this team's been rolling. They've been beating everybody. And he was right. Every kid that he had on his team was like 5'10", 140 pounds. But I think the thing I took away the most from that was no excuses. We're going to have what we have. We're going to adapt. But we're still going to go out and win a lot of football games, which is exactly what he's done at Smithson Valley for two-plus decades. Yep, got Andrew Sandejo playing in the playoffs this weekend for the Minnesota Vikings. Other players as well have gone on to the NFL. And Keith Kaiser on your right, fourth year at Bernie Champion, coached a couple of years at MacArthur, longtime assistant here in San Antonio. He's done a great job at Bernie Champion so Yeah, he was far. at Marshall High School, too, and we got a chance to see his squad play earlier this year on Hallmark University Thursday Night Lights. I think the interesting thing about these all-star games, Don, is that you've got two really good coaching staffs. They have just one week yeah. to kind of throw these guys together, figure out a game plan, and then go execute a bunch of really good players. So it's going to be interesting to see how Identify it turns out. Identify the talent, put them in the right place, and we're going to have a lot of fun with them. We'll take you into the huddle for some play calling as well. It's going to be a lot of fun. Don't go anywhere. The national anthem and the kickoff of the 40th anniversary of the San Antonio Sports All-Star Game presented by HEB is coming up next. Closed captioning for tonight's game is sponsored by Lymphedema MD. Olivia Ajia. Olivia is a 17-year-old senior at Alamo Heights High School, a singer, songwriter, and has been performing the national anthem in San Antonio sports venues since she was 14 years old. dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glow the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled Fantastic job. Wow, the talent on the football field's got a long way to go to compete with the young lady from Alamo Heights. Fantastic. Let's go down to the sidelines. Mike Hernandez, as always, joining us on the sidelines. And this is Mike's favorite game of the year because he gets to be in the huddle. Absolutely, guys. Hey, this is awesome. We've got some of the best talent in the area. Everybody's gathered here at the beautiful Alamo Dome, and it's, it's almost kickoff time now. East versus West. Great coaching, great kids, and everybody, all the coaches I've talked to this week have said the same thing. The players have been outstanding, very cooperative, working hard, no attitudes, nobody's too good for this. Everybody's ready to come out here and have a good time. One of the things that makes this special, as you mentioned off the top there, is that we're going to get to actually go in during the games, which normally it's off limits for us. If you watch any of the Thursday Night Lights, you know that that normally does not happen. But in this case, since it is an all-star game, we're going to get to come out here, talk to the players after they make a big play, talk to the coaches, and hopefully at some point we're going to be able to get in the huddle and see what they're calling, what's the next play. Maybe even they'll take a, a coaching hint or two. So I want you to watch the game closely, guys, because you may have to call the play and, and make the big one to win the game. All right, thanks a lot, Mike. Hey, by the way, if you want to call a play, 
tweet us your best idea at Don Harris 4 on Twitter. And Chuck is at Max Sports. SA. SA at Max Sports SA. So tweet us your, your play and and perhaps we'll uh, see which one we can send down to Mike and maybe the coaches will run it. You see Keith Kaiser from Bernie Champion. He's coaching his squad. Larry Hill's coaching the other. And the West will receive tonight's first half kickoff, which is sponsored by Ernest Roofing. Ernest Roofing, we've got you covered. So the East is in blue. The West is in white. And again, these are the top 100 football players in San Antonio. Now, we will say this. Some of the very top recruits are sending this one out because they don't want to worry about an injury after they've received their big time full rides. But, you know, Javion Cardwell from Oklahoma State, Davis Brenz is going to Tulsa. We've got a UTSA kid and Spencer Burford. A lot of these kids want to get that one last game in with their friends. I admire that. I also admire nothing wrong with graduating early in December and going on to spring football or wherever big college you're playing at. But I also really like the kids who decide to graduate their class and play in games like this and really enjoy the high school experience. Number 99 right there is from San Antonio Christian High School. That's Ryan Hotchkiss, and he will kick it off to the West. Back deep for your West squad is Jalen Griffin from Brandeis. And number 11 is Malik Ross from Jay. Yeah, what I like about this, Don, and you heard Mike talk about this, that the coaches hadn't had any problems with any of these guys during the week of practice. I'm not surprised, because all these guys were nominated by their head coaches, and then there's a little bit of a vetting process. It's not perfect by any means, but now we think we've assembled a pretty good group here this afternoon. And again, here's your Ernest Roofing first half kickoff. Hotchkiss gets his foot into it, and it is headed towards Jalen Griffin of the Brandeis Broncos. And he comes across the 15, and he's met right there at about the 23-yard line after a 13-yard return. And we'll get our first look at the West offense. Interesting uh, decisions on who's starting at quarterback, Chuck, with uh, Roel Sanchez of O'Connor and Tyler Vitt playing rock, paper, scissors. Yeah. And Roel Sanchez, the winner. Hey, you know, some of this stuff is pretty scientific, right? You got two really good quarterbacks. Let's see who wins rock, paper, scissors. Roel came out on top, which is what he's done a lot of during his high school career at O'Connor and, you know, hopefully maybe end up at the Naval Academy playing quarterback there. The Express News Offensive Player of the Year keeps and picks up about two on a little zone read action there. You're going with tempo too, huh? These kids are so smart these days. A lot of them run the same type stuff. Terminology is different. Sanchez looking to throw, pressured, completes it. And out of bounds is that big, big Ben Sims. Yeah, really good improvisational skills by Roel Sanchez. He was looking downfield, but his wide receiver fell down on the play, and so he went down to a secondary guy, and he was looking for Jalen Griffin initially. He hit Sims, and if you're a Baylor Bear go. fan, that big tight end will be playing for Baylor. Carry that time was by Devin Moore out of Warren High School, and he gets a couple. He third down and short. Now, not a lot of time for this East defense to set up the way the West is going here quickly to start this football game. Sanchez does have his familiar face in number four, Jalen Hughes, a teammate of O'Connor, split to the left side in the slot. Now oh, they'll no. get another look from the coaching staff. Still plenty of time, just now hitting 10 on the play clock. It's fourth and one. And they hand it to Moore, and he's got the first down. And Moore. <laughs> for more. Yeah, I like what you did there. <laughs> That's a power aid first down here in the San Antonio Sports All-Star game. They'll go quickly with a new set of downs. Yeah, young man from Warren picking up the first down marker on a really nice run. Fake to him, a little play action. The pressure, Sanchez rolling out. Wants to throw it. Instead, he'll just put his head down and get back to the line of scrimmage. Good closing speed there by C.J. Keeler from Smithson Valley, who closed it down quickly and got him out of bounds. Well, I like what Roel Sanchez did right there. Eyes are downfield after the play fake. And then look, just a little 
shimmy of the shoulders there, got the defender up in the air and was able to go right around him and at least turn it up for a yard. Here's Moore on the carry, and he is met hard and brought down by big number 41 for the E squad, and that's Ben Shackelford from Bandera. Carter Brew in there as well. Really good pressure and good surge there from the big guys up front from the E squad. Third down and long now for Sanchez. He's got three receivers to his left. He looks right now coming back this way. It's complete, but snuffing it out was that East defense. They had it all wrapped up, including Carlos Covarrubias, um, excuse me, Trayvon Merrick Woodward, one of the kids we featured from Smithson Valley. He's going to be playing at TCU, and you can see why right here. Yeah, really good job by the East defense recognizing the bubble screen. Looked like they wanted to go right or at least sell it that way and then came back left. And the East defense having none of it. Tyler Vitt, the quarterback who will play at Texas State, is back to punt. I guess he's the up man. Almost getting to the punter was the East squad. Merrick Woodward will let it bounce, and it takes a good bounce from the rest inside the 10, all the way down to the nine yard line. So the East is gonna have their work cut out for them after a 56 yard punt. They're coming back with the first possession for the East right after this. Welcome back. You're looking at Ryan Redding out of New Braunfels. He's the quarterback to start for the East. Clemens is Marshawn Brown behind him as the running back. Instead, they handed on a little sweep to the left side and picking about up about six yards is Mason Pierce from Smithson Valley. Ryan Redding, fantastic season there, over 3,000 yards passing and 23 touchdowns. Uh, for the Unicorns, great season, selected by his coach to represent. Well, you can tell by those stats, he looks like a young man that likes to get the ball downfield. That's a lot of yardage from those completions. He's got Brandon McDuffie of Johnson split right. Instead, Hearn hands off to Brown, and Brown is brought down quickly. <laughs> Big old Brandon Matterson. Number 99 from Brandeis High School. 6'2", 282 pounds. It looked like he was playing that play like he just missed lunch. Feed the big fell. Look at him get after it. Nice job, Madison. Of course, Brandeis had a, another good season, as they always seem to do. Third down and one. Ready gets the check down from his coaching staff. He'll keep it himself. And he lunges for the first down for the E squad. Nice job fending off the initial penetration. Let's go down to the sidelines. Mike standing by with a quarterback who was the very best in San Antonio. San Antonio's Offensive Player of the Year and taking his squad deep into the playoffs. Yes, he did. We're talking about Roel Sanchez. How are you doing, son? I'm doing good, thank you. Good. So first series under your belt, were you a little nervous? No, I mean, we got guys that make, play, make plays out there and it gives me the confidence. Okay, so is it true that you all decided who was going to start today with the rock, paper, scissors thing? <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, Tyler, you know, he's a, he's a great player, great guy, and, you know, coach just basically told us, he was like, you know, y'all are neck and neck right now. He was like, best two out of three. So we, we went ahead and decided that way. Okay, so one last question before I let you go. What do you th what's your next step now? Where are you going to college? What are you looking at? Um, I'm hoping to uh, be for sure on that next month. By next month, uh, I don't really have much offer right now, but uh, hopefully after this game, and you know, as uh, as January comes along, and more offers will come in. Well, if an offer doesn't come along, they're absolutely crazy, okay? Because uh, you you can play some ball, and you, you deserve to play at the next time. Good luck, to you. Good luck the Thanks, Mike. East running a little reserve, reverse, and nice pickup going a long way and ended with a big time hit. Yeah, that was a hunter from Smithson Valley, the tight end coming across and picking up big yardage, but we got a flag down. Yeah, I don't know what they're gonna call Holding here. On the offense, number four, 10 yard penalty for the spot of the foul. Still first down. All right, they saw it down on the field. I thought Keith Jefferson did a really good job out there blocking out in front, but Brock Pittman and crew saw it otherwise, and we had Brock 
and a few of these guys all season long on Hallmark University TNL. And those guys do such a great job officiating. We're not going to argue with them at all. He saw it. It must be true. How about the lick by Jaime Ramirez from Holy Cross at the end of that play? Inside handoff, and bouncing it to the outside, and getting across the 35, a mouthpiece goes flying. Again, it's Ramir Jaime Ramirez from Smithson Valley putting the wood down. Renee Palomino on the carry. Well, Renee Palomino, one of the most talented backs in the area, just has a real shiftiness to him, a la Emmett Smith. You know, not as big, obviously, but just one of those guys you know, we heard it from all the coaches. They've got a chance to see this guy. They have the utmost respect for the, his ability to get the ball up and down the field. Second down and five. They fake it to Palomino. Throw it out here in the flat. It's caught. Diving for the first down is again with Heath Dunn this time out of post. 6'4", 215. Don, no, we saw Renee Palomino play a handful times. of times yeah. in high school. And yeah, look at that. Rewarded for his outstanding season. Second team All-State, but I mean, just ridiculous. The, the stats that this kid put up year after year at Highlands High School, and you know, the coaches just talk about what kind of a kid he is. Not, you know, forget the football player. Going out here in the flat, that's Marshawn Brown. He's got a major move. Put his foot in the ground, made a man miss, and picks up another power eight first down for Marshawn Brown from Clemens High School. Yeah, Ryan Redding doing a really good job of looking downfield, trying to get a home run. There was nothing there, so he hits his check down, and Marshawn Brown, yeah, another guy that's got a little shimmy in those hips. Turn that into a big game. Full backfield for Redding. Hand it again to Brown, and again, Brown is going nowhere. This is a big defensive front by the West, including Nate Gonzalez from Stevens on the tackle. Yeah, as we take a look at Marshawn Brown's stats from Clemens High School, again, you know, look what he did in 15, 16, and 17. A guy who's close to 2,000 yards rushing and 21 touchdowns, all district performer. And there you see the list of offers that he's gotten so far. Second down and 10 after that one didn't pick up anything. And Redding will fire with slant. It's been completed once before and again to Brandon McDuffie out of Johnson High School who right now has two catches for over 20 yards. Yeah, nice, job. nice catch and I don't know what was more impressive, the throw and the catch or the fact that Keith Jefferson kind of let that thing go right through and knew that it, the target was 11. So we got the East team on the move here as we take a look at Brandon Duffy's, Brandon McDuffie and the stats he was able to put up over the last few years, 44 catches and 16 touchdowns. Hand to Palomino on a sweep and look at his speed from the kid from Highlands. And that's what you were talking about earlier, an amazing ability to make people miss. Deceptive speed despite his small frame. He was one of the most exciting players that we had on Thursday Night Lights for three seasons. As a sophomore, junior, and senior. It's just one of those things, you know, you wish he was 6'4 and 240 pounds. He's just an unbelievable athlete. But even with that said, here he has found his way into the San Antonio Sports All-Star Game, and for good reason. I mean, again, I talked to a lot of coaches that said they felt like he was the best back in the entire city. 13th play of this drive is bouncing it to the outside and getting... Good yardage is Trayvon Tippins from Madison. There you go, Chuck Madison Maverick in the house. Well, Trayvon Tippins doing a really nice job. He looked like he wanted to bust that through the eight gap. There was nothing there. Ran at the back of one of his players, and sometimes a running back gets lost. It's a power aid first down for the all district performer, first teamer from Madison, 5'10, 185. Yeah, did a nice job after running up the back there, bouncing it outside and turning it into a positive game. New set of downs is Redding, boots to the left, fires. It's complete. Going up the sideline is the tight end from Smithson Valley. And I tell you what, big ad hunter is a load. That's the second time in a row they've targeted him. He's close to the first down. In fact, he's got it, first and goal. I'll tell you that, and Jaime Ramirez from Holy Cross not giving anything away either. 
It was a guy that could play running back or strong safety, six feet, 185 pounds, and he wasn't going over there to shake the young man's hand on that tack. <laughs> it's our CPS Energy cheer cam. Cheerleaders out in full force. Put Hunter in the backfield along with Tippins. It's going to be kept by Redding. He's trying to get outside, cuts it back and scores. Ryan Redding scores for the East, and they're on the board first. Nice, long drive. 15 plays. Out 90 yards. Yeah, outstanding job by Ryan Redding. Watch him set this run up. Oh, we're going to go outside. No, I'm going to cut it back in. And all he needed was that one little crease. We're going to find the pay turf. Get into the end zone for our first six of the afternoon. Hotchkiss and Sacks Lion on to kick the extra point. Good exchange, and it's right down the middle. And the East leads it 7 0. Can the West answer? We'll be back at the Dome in the CW 35 after this. All right. Welcome back to the Alamo Dome after a 14 play, 90 yard drive. Ryan Redding strikes pay dirt for the East, and they're on the board first. Out of Family and friends smiling on the America's Diamond Smile Cam. Good turnout here in the Alamo Dome for the second game of this doubleheader. Love it. Not only does mom and dad and grandparents come, but a lot of times these schools bring a nice contingent of family and friends and teammates who play with the young man at their school. And as Chuck said earlier, these are the best of the best, not just in talent, but these are their guys that their coaches nominated based not only on their ability, they do want to see these kids get a look at the next level, but also these are their captains, their leaders, their aces in the classroom, and this is a, a reward for a job well done as Hotchkiss kicks it deep. It's taken at the 11. Getting across is Jalen Griffin, and that's where the West will have it when we come back with the East leading 7-0. Welcome back to the Alamo Dome. Larry Hill's team strikes first. They lead it 7-0 in the West. Taking over on this possession. Tyler Vitt, the quarterback, he turns and hands off to uh, his running back. And on this possession, that's Devin Moore out of Warren. Vitt, long, tall QB headed to Texas State. Yeah, kind of weird, right, seeing a kid from Mac playing on the west side. But I guess some of these schools have been grandfathered in. But Tyler Vitt, Don, one of the best quarterbacks I've seen in the area. I mean, really looks the part. Size, got the cannon arm, played in a really good district. And you're seeing some of that off right here as he completes the pass on the other end. Yeah, to a very familiar target. That's Ethan Gottschalk out of MacArthur. So they know how to run that play. Teammate to teammate as he fires out in the flat. Another good ball and breaking a tackle and getting all the way down to the 40 is Jalen Hughes. He was a star at O'Connor, one of the best offensive players out there with Roel Sanchez. And how this kid does not have a Division I scholarship yet is beyond me. He's got some smaller schools looking at him, but he's another one of those guys that should be a D1 player. And fire his way again. You see his athletic ability to catch it. He's across the 40 as we're close to now third and about two. And here's Vitt's numbers, over 7,500 yards in his career there. And again, he's gonna be playing up I-35 in San Marcos. I mean, it's, it's one thing, you see all the touchdowns, you know, but he also beats you with his feet. He's just one of those guys they're gonna love having in San Marcos. Comp oh, incomplete as it was dropped out in the flat. Let's go down to the sidelines. Mike Hernandez standing by with the hero of the last drive. All right, real quick, Ryan's got to go back in. This is Ryan Redding from New Braunfels. Just scored the touchdown. How you doing? Good. How'd it feel? It felt awesome. It was yeah. fun. Fun yeah. to be out here. That was a great drive, man. You guys looked like you like, like you had scripted that one out. Yes, sir. It was the same place we've been running practice mostly. It's okay. easy. All right, so I'm going to let you get back. I know you're going to be going in here. So, again, good luck in the rest of the game, and, and uh, this has got to be quite an honor for you. Yes, sir. It's awesome. It's a great honor to play for San, in the San Antonio All-Star game. So. Well, it's nice to see you out there. Good luck in the rest of the game. All right, thanks a lot, Mike. How about a fake here on fourth and one and a half? Look at the splits. 
<laughs> Look at oh. this vent on the roof. Fake. Look at the ball. Completed all the way down to the 20 and being dragged down at about the 14 yard line is number 41, and that's Ben Shackelford from Bandera, Texas. Yeah, good job, Coach Kaiser. Throwing out a little razzle and dazzle here. Surprise fakes are loud in, in, a, in an all-star game, but hey, whatever. I'll tell you what, really not too bad of coverage. Just Tyler Ben throwing them open. Oh man, what a throw. Hey, it's an all-star game. 45 here. yards. You're here you may as well win it, right? I like that. That's right. Hey, you can see it on the screen. You're entering the high school music service red zone. The West answering quickly behind the big right end of Tyler Vitt returns and hands inside. Big collision there. Ball carrier on that one was number 22, Ed Perez from Southside. Look at some of the size of these guys, like 56. Alex Brown from Johnson High School, 6'2", 225. Boy, these defensive lines are huge. Perez doing it running back. They throw a little tight end pop pass, touchdown West. Big Ben Sims, the Baylor Bear and Clark Cougar. And they made it look easy. Tyler hit, surgical. Yeah, almost like a little jump pass here, right? Yeah, they just release the tight end and act like he's blocking and then release and just yeah. classic pop pass to the tight end. See Big Ben. Yeah. Baylor commit all the way. And how about the job that Matt Rule's doing at Baylor? They go one win, and yet they end up with a top 15 recruiting class in the country. And Tommy Bush, who still hasn't decided from Clemens, is down to his final two, and it's Baylor and Georgia, so they may move up the, the ranks. All I know is that Ben Sims can play some football, and they did a really good job this year, the Cougs, moving the ball up and down the field, throwing the ball, and... Ben Sims looked the part and has for a couple of years. I mean, this guy's been getting interest for a couple of years now. Clark and talked to him earlier this year. We saw him on TNL and they won their game that night. Ben said, you know, I just felt very comfortable in Waco the first time yeah. I stepped on the campus. And yeah, they've had the coaching change, but he's stuck with his commitment. If, if you can win one game and talk some of the best recruits in the country, to come change the culture there, uh, then that says a lot about how good Matt Rule is in the living room. Because, you know, that Baylor ship started to sink after the big controversy there. And had a really rough year this year. But everybody who's been in contact with Rule is impressed by the way he conducts himself. And obviously parents like him because to end up with a 12th ranked in some polls, 14th ranked in others recruiting class, after a one-win season, and you're right up there with the Bamas and the Georgias and the Tennessees and the Texases and the A&Ms. Unbelievable. Yeah, you know, and some of this, too, is, you know, if you're a high school kid and you're being recruited by a lot of different places. Like I saw, you know, there was a young man earlier today that chose Purdue over Alabama, Georgia, all the, you know, quote-unquote mega schools. You know, and, and if you're a young man, you know probably as a freshman, you're not getting on the field yeah. at an Alabama or a Georgia. But if you go to a Purdue, you got a chance to play you know, many, many years there. So, I mean, that's got to be enticing for a lot of kids as well. Free kick out of bounds on the kicking team. Five-yard penalty, free kick. They're going to kick it again after they tried the old pooch. You know, keeping it away from Merrick Woodard and Brandon McDuffie from Johnson, both electric players back there trying to keep it away from them. Joe Heath from St. Mary's Hall, one of the up men. But right now, Chuck, if I'm looking at one of these guys who, and we see it every year, one of these guys will get, I don't know, a Shriner College or a Concordia Lutheran or Mary Harden Baylor will give a ride at the last minute. The, the contact that Jaime Ramirez of Holy Cross has been making so far, he's one guy that if I'm scouting for one of those schools and he doesn't have a ride, I, I like the way he plays football. I'm, there, there are a lot of those guys, and you're right. We see them week in and week out. You know, some of these guys that are 
all district performers and their stats are just off the chains but I don't know man it's a it's a weird deal sometimes trying to figure out who can play and who can nice speed right there in the initial return by McDuffie but he's brought down short of the 40 still good field position by East by the East and that's the end of the first quarter we're all knotted up we got a good one here in the dome second quarter straight ahead Stick with us on the CW35. Yeah. Welcome back to the East-West All-Star Game. This is the San Antonio Sports All-Star Game presented by HEB. They've been playing this for 40 years in San Antonio. Some of the biggest names ever to come out of this town have played in it. In recent years, it's moved here to the Alamo Dome. We've been televising it for the last few and uh, having a great time watching these young men in their high school careers and begin the next phase as quarterback keep here for the East. And Ryan Redding, who led his team to a touchdown on the last drive. You're right, Chuck. You're talking about the size. Just look at the size of that West defensive front. And it's not typical of an offensive or a defensive line you would face in a regular high school football game. Well, it's you know. Big old boys. Yeah, and getting back to your point earlier about, you know, some of these kids committing late. I mean, you can just talk about what we had last year. It's an ultra nice run up the middle there. I mean, you know, Mason Lawrence from Sachs. Commits late, goes to Carolina, walks on over there. Court Jaquis is at Texas, and that didn't happen overnight. So, yeah, there's still time for some of these guys. But, you know, again, I, I, I'm not an expert in the whole recruiting deal. All I know is normally big kids get big scholarships. And then you go from there. If you're not 6'3", if you're 5'8", five, 5'9", five, you got to walk on water to get their attention. A lot of these guys do. Hotchkiss, a little delay, a little flea flicker, going deep, coming back for it and making the catch, and a move, still on his feet, inside the 10. How about that play by Brandon McDuffie? And McDuffie doing an outstanding job, because Don, where I come from, birds like that get hunted. <laughs> that thing was a duck, but... Duffy doing a great job coming back. You know, sometimes you want to put so much mustard under that ball, you don't find the ears. Happened to me a lot in the street as a kid, but. That's a kielbasa of yeah. smoked meat first down inside the red zone. Great job, though. Found the ears, what? picked up the ball, got the first. The high school music red zone, and this one's completed to the outside, trying to score. Getting close is. Felton Walls from Roosevelt. But you know what? Uh, the kid McDuffie that made the catch there, he, he's a kick returner, and that ball was end over. <laughs> Probably played some baseball, too. Probably center field. Located the ball, I tracked it, came I, back for it. I don't know that. I've ever seen an end over in throw. Yeah, Felton Walls just a shade under six feet and wrapping up his high school career at Roosevelt, where he scored seven times. Glad to have him here. Inside handoff and getting close to the goal line, right down to the two yard line for the East is stopped right there. And again, it's Palomino out of Highlands High School. Tough run by a little kid, 145 pounds. He wasn't afraid to stick his head down no, and go in there with the big boy. Tough and outstanding vision and loads of junk in his game. It's subtle, but We've seen a lot of guys with trying to bring down Rene Palomino over the years. Brown has it from Clemens. He bounces it. Touchdown East. Marshawn Brown. The Clemens buff. Boy, remember the game we had earlier this year on Hallmark University TNL? It was the Marshawn Brown, Brendan Brady show from Steele. Yeah. Marshawn Brown doing his thing. This guy really talented back. Yeah, looked like he was going to go right, cut it back, ended up walking in. Great vision, bounced it to the left, and 
Hotchkiss from San Antonio Christian on for his second PAT of the night. Good hold right down Main Street. And the East has a 14-7 lead. The West gets it back. Look like Mike Hernandez eavesdrop on that West sideline when we come back. Don't go anywhere. Good game here at the Dome. Welcome back here, America's Diamond Smile Cam. Checking out the fans having a good time here at the Dome. Great time. Marshawn Brown putting the East up by a touchdown. That last touchdown run. Yeah, Larry Hill's offense is cooking. It's two straight drives where they've ended up in the end zone. Methodical, clock-eating drives. Again, I think that's the most stunning thing. You come out here and you actually get to watch football and watch it well played for a bunch of guys that didn't have a whole lot of practice time together. That ball is kicked out of bounds, and so we'll have a flag and perhaps a do-over. Freak out of bounds on the kicking team. Five-yard penalty, re-kick. Ah, nothing like these do-overs on kicks, huh? I, I'm all about an all-star game. Put it at the 25 or 30, and let's go play right. football. Especially when it's, you know, you got a one week to coach special teams. Of course, in a game like this, this is where you're going to have big plays. We you're saw that a few years ago with Justin Stock. Oh, ridiculous. I mean, it, it, the, the returner has such an advantage in, in this. Covering kicks is something you have to practice all year to get good at. So maybe we'll see something fun happen. Raul Sanchez back there, the quarterback? Is that true? <laughs> Got tie-dyed jerseys. I can't tell. It looks like Sanchez will take it yeah. right there. Look at big boy. The 15. Breaks a tackle. Has another down to about the 28-yard line. And he's brought down there. Let's see if he stays in and plays a little QB. Yeah, I'll tell you what. That's what you ask him. You a quarterback? No, sir. I'm a football player. Let's go down to Mike Hernandez, who's going to get the play for us. Mike? All right, I got J.D. Hammersall right here. Ha uh, Zimmer Hansel. <laughs> Excuse me. He's an offensive coordinator. Okay, go ahead. All right, hey, we're going to go doubles. Hey, we're going to go zero here with 91 on the outside, okay? See what you like. Let's run it. Let's run it. All right, so in English, what is that, J.D.? So we got a little RPO here. So we're going to base block. And our quarterback, if he sees five in a box, he's going to give it. If there's six in a box, he's going to throw an outside hitch route to one of the outside guys, depending on how the corner's playing. Now, who's he reading? So right now, there's only five in a box. So he could throw it, he could give it, or he could throw this one route to each side because the corner's off. So he could throw a one route. That's a little hitch to the outside. There you go, right there. Boom. Ah, uh, got to get it up. Got a late hit on the quarterback. And the ball hit the ground. That's incomplete. The quarterback is Brooks Klutz out of Bernie. And they'll first foul. That was Rubbing just laughing the because the you heard defense. somebody Number yell, hey, you got to get it up. Like, hey, coach, I'd like to get first it up, down. but somebody's smashing my face in. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Same call, Mike. Trips on the east side over there. So we got three receivers over there. He's gonna, he's gonna read the outside backer over here on the trip side. And so he could throw it to the number 19 or he could throw it to the inside receiver number three. So he's gonna look at 28 right here. Whatever 28 does, he's wrong. Okay, <laughs> so let's see what he's looking at. He's gonna look at 28. 28 standing right there at the 45. Uh, gotta get the snap. Good coverage by that defensive front. And getting back there for a near sack is number 40, C.J. Keeler out of Smithson Valley. So, got trips left. Hey, two, 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 two. You're gonna have to do some verticals now. That's what's interesting. You know, you think you got the play you think is gonna work. And you gonna read the big boy over here. He's gonna give it or keep it, and then he can throw the bubble off this outside backer. They have a bubble screen. Ah, he should have pulled it there. So he gave it, and it doesn't go anywhere. About a so he made, he made the wrong decision based on, on yeah, the situation? Yeah, he, he made the wrong read there. Okay, and hey, we're going to go doubles, 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 doubles. Okay. 
It's self-preservation, Don. He made the wrong read because he got smashed on the play before. Our inside receiver right here is going to have a post, and our slot on the other side is going to give a dig. So we're going to look at this safety here. We're going to try to throw it over the safety's head. All right, so we got a chance to throw Brooks it. Doing. Brooks is pitching it on an option to the outside. Complete ad-lib play. Picks up a couple, and it'll be fourth down in a mile. All have right. To punt it. Uh, they were trying to go deep, but outstanding coverage on the back end downfield by Allen Dukes from East Central. 6'1", 175 pound free safety. Doing a really good job not letting his receiver beat him downfield. Really nowhere to go with the football. And you, and you get a, a real interesting uh, look there at terminology and just how much these quarterbacks have options. On, in, in an offense like this. Yeah, so and Eric Woodard back to receive it. He's a kid going to TCU. He's dangerous. Hopefully he'll get a chance to return this. We can see his athletic ability. Well, and in all fairness, too, there's not a lot of plays for fourth and 20. Correct. That one's off the side of the foot and out of the bounds. And the East will have great field position already up 14-7 when we come back. Welcome back to Medina Valley cheerleaders. Winners of our CPS Energy cheer cam all year long. We asked you to vote for your favorite cheer squad in the San Antonio Sports All-Star Cheer Challenge, which was powered by CPS Energy. And you're looking at some of the winners right now Mount Medina Valley. All right, now we'll see if this West defense can come up with a stop. East has had its way last two drives. New quarterback in for the East. And that's Joseph Palafos, and he's taken off with it. And you're seeing those Highlands Owls, both Palafos and Palomino, really skilled, fast, speedy players. And, you know, SAISD doesn't get a lot of the love that some of the north side school districts do, but we saw him on Thursday Night Lights and Joseph Palafos and Palomino proving already in this game that they can play with anybody in the city. No, all you have to do is look to see how hard it was to win ball games before these guys got there. Palafos wanting to throw it, going deep, got a man, and it's almost caught, but he's interfered with as the intended receiver was Jalen Battles out of Madison. Or Jalen Battles doing a really good job of working his way back for this football. And he got interfered with. Number 14. Still almost made the play. 15 yard penalty. I'll tell First you, Don, down. you know, we talk about this young man. I don't know what sport he's going to play. Because this guy, you get the feeling he could do whatever he wanted. Basketball game today. Well, he played in it. Yeah, I don't know if he did or not. I wasn't able to check. But. He's also a pitcher, and that might be his best sport of baseball. So, I mean, this guy does everything. He's going to punt, too, at some point here today. But, hey, just one of those guys. And, you know, there's, there's quite a few of them that we got out here. We just heard that Ethan Gottschalk from MacArthur that plays for the West committed to play baseball at a and Corpus today. Time out. Great athletes. E. First time out of the half. East is taking a timeout. We'll keep it here. They've got a kielbasa smoke meet first down. They're going to talk it over. And that's, it's kind of interesting, you know, and, and it, it varies from school to school. You know, do you want the kid that only plays football, that's a football junkie, that just football, 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 or do you want the best athlete, like what TCU is always going at? They want guys that are super athletic that, you know, may play two or three different sports, or you know, they start off at one position and they'll turn them into another. Well, that, you see that TCU do that a lot. The, the best overall athlete in town as far as three sports. I mean, he's got, he's a fantastic punter. He's a fantastic wide receiver. He had a basketball game today for Madison that he played in. He's a baseball pitcher that is, he's definitely, prob well, I would say definitely playing baseball in college. Yeah. That might be his best sport. So, I mean, he's a terrific athlete. But you see, you know, just on a play like that, a ball a little underthrown, he's trying to help his quarterback out, who's rolling to his wrong-hand side. 
and worked his way back, saw the ball the whole way, and trying to make a play for his team. On the sweep, a young man out of Judson High School, Keith Jefferson, a wide receiver out of Judson, had a great career there. One of the favorite targets of John Williams and their very successful run for four years. Yeah, it's one of those where you haven't been able to get the ball to him in the air. Why not give him to him on a little round play? And turn it upfield, and the East is marching again. Inside the high school music red zone, we got a first and ten. Palafos has a word with his back in the backfield and then keeps and tries to pick up a few, but big number 99 there again for the West. And Brandon Matterson out of Brandeis is hard to block. This is another guy, you know, we saw him play earlier this year too. He's just a space eater and he's got nimble feet. You know, one of those guys that plays the one technique is going to draw a lot of attention, still gets his game in and game out. Trayvon Tippins in it running back, along with Jonathan Handy from McCollum, who we saw on Thursday Night Lights. In motion is Jefferson. And it's Tippins on a sweep. Cuts it inside and going nowhere again. Great coverage by that defensive front, including number 46, Cade Hunter from Bernie. Isaiah Paul also in on the play which I know is redundant. He's in on most plays. <laughs> you know, with all the talent we had in San Antonio, O'Connor's run, Steele's run, not even Caden Stearns made all state first team 6A, but yet Isaiah Paul, at linebacker from Brennan, made first team all state in class 6A. Just an amazing accomplishment for him. Third down and 11. It's a zone read. And taken off with it and getting to the five with some more major contact is Palafos. Yeah, really nice job junking up the run a little bit. Getting it up, turning it up. Another big hit. Dylan Smith from Marshall. Lay in the wood right there, which brings up fourth down and four. They can pick up a first down without scoring. And Larry Hill and company rolling the bones. And they're going to go for it. Yeah, they figure, why not? We don't get it? All right. We'll see if the West can go 95 on us. And they'll take a timeout here, and Larry Hill will take a timeout and talk about it. Timeout. E. Left. Second of the half. It's time for a Whataburger player profile. Alex Brown out of Johnson High School. 6'2", 225. Johnson had a great season, and they've got some players making noise in this game right here. Yeah, I talked about Alex Brown earlier. I mean, this young man certainly looks the part, and you see the season he had eight sacks for the Jags, 37 tackles, a block to kick, did a little bit of everything. What a player. What a burger. All these guys we talked to earlier in the week, some of them were just quite frankly, you know, very honest. This is my last football game. You hoping to get a ride somewhere? Nope. Going to college, going to study, whatever. Hoping to be a doctor or a lawyer or a banker or whatever. And But I just want to play in this one more time. And so we talk about the kids that are getting full rides and going other places. Uh, but there's a lot of young men out here who know this is the last time they're putting on a pair of pads and are fine with it. And looking forward to uh, doing something else and being a regular college student. Somebody is going to get them one heck of an intramural quarterback if Roel Sanchez <laughs> right. doesn't get a... Yeah. Get a ride somewhere. Well, something tells me he will, but you're absolutely right. But that's the thing about these kids nowadays, man. There's a lot of varied interests out there, and played a lot of football. They know. Ryan Hotchkiss already has two extra points on to attempt a 22-yarder. A little tough snap and hold there. But the kick is up, and it's good. Nice job by the holder there to hang on to a snap and complete the exchange and Ryan Hoskins has five points now. Absolutely and you're right. Credit the holder but credit Hodgkiss too. I mean it doesn't take much to throw off a kicker's rhythm and that man probably a little Fred Astaire and shuffled the feet, regroup able to stick it through the pipes. Hey we also want to reward the scholar athletes. You know we've had it all year long. Our 
Vulcan Materials Company $10,000 scholarship. And it goes to Cole Kuno of Reagan High School. He's the Scholar Athlete of the Year. And talk about kids going on to the next level to pursue other things, and including education. Kuno, he's got 10 grand in his pocket to help him on his way to the university of his choice. So good for him. Oh, that's going to come in handy. I can promise you that. Dad paying tuition. Oh, you got that right, brother. <laughs> Somebody's going to be real grateful for that 10 gur. They should have a picture with his dad holding the check. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> you tell dad, hey, you just won the lottery, bro. Every bit helps. Oh, Hell's Sanchez. Bells action going on. Got Mark Kusenberger, our prize statistician. Doing Check out Real Angus Young. He wants to return it. He gets a block. Sanchez turns it up. And he's collared right at about the 25 yard line. But you got to love Roel Sanchez. 12 yard return. You know, he convinced the coaches probably of return kicks in this game. He wants any look he can get to play at the next oh, level. Absolutely. And again, you know, it's what he is. He's a quarterback, but he's a football player. Have we seen better leadership from a guy for, for two or three years? I mean, I'm sure there's, yeah. there's guys who are equal, but we've had him on, on Thursday Night Lights, and we've watched his, you know, leadership there at O'Connor with Coach Molesky. And kids seem to follow him. Even in an all-star game like this, you know, you show up to day one, you get your jerseys and your helmets, and there's that one kid that says, hey, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this. He's in just the, the consummate leader. Very smart in the classroom, keeping it here. Picking up about six. Nice job there, and some good blocking out in front, including Big Ben Sims. Helping his district mate pick up five on the play. Carter Brew from Alamo Heights made the tackle. Nice tackle. Sanchez on a boot. Now he's going to keep it. Almost wanted to throw it. He's thrown down just short of the first down by Cody Nelson at Alamo Heights. Now set up third and one. You could tell he wanted to go to Sims about right here and then decided to keep it. Spencer Gilliam also there on the play. 248 left, high snap. Sanchez brings it in and now fires deep down the sidelines and it's almost caught but incomplete. Looking for his best friend, Jalen Hughes. And again, Spencer Gilliam from Reagan doing a really nice job, but that's one of those tough deals there. Your Royal Sanchez, first you gotta find the snap. He was lucky enough just to tip it to himself and then, you know, just bust up the whole rhythm of the play. Really good play by Gillian there, huh? Yeah, good closing speed, knocked it away. Sanchez has big Diego Vela from Churchill behind him. I wouldn't think twice about handing it to him on fourth down, but they had a jump on the left side, left Ball tackle. Start. On the offense, number 63, five yard penalty. Still fourth down. That's going to cost him a chance to go for it on fourth down. Had fourth and one, Tanner Ahoyt out of Edison moved, and so they'll run out the punting team and kick it away to Merrick Woodard, who I still want to see return a punt. I I've seen this kid's huddle tape, the kid going to TCU from Smithson Valley, that young man right there, and his vertical leap and his athletic ability is something special. Larry Hills, of all the great athletes that he's had, he says he's one of the best he's ever coached, just from a trim, you know, pure athletic ability standpoint. Speed, leaping ability, et cetera. And he may have a chance at returning this one. Woodard breaks one tackle. Busts it open, makes it, put his foot in the ground, and look out. He's got one man to beat. Cuts it inside, and he's brought down right at the 24-yard line. Trayvon Mayrig Woodard. We've got a flag down right at about the 35-yard line. It's a 42-yard return, but we'll see what the penalty was. All I could say is great hustle by Jalen Griffin. I'm sorry, Jalen Hughes to work his way back and save what would have been a touchdown. Boy, you almost called your shot there. <laughs> you could see his abilities. 
That one move at about midfield when he stuck his foot in the ground. There are two the fouls way. on the play. Both on the return team. Illegal block in the back, number seven, Phil D.B. Pye. Illegal block in the back, number... <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter, Brock. It, you know, as good as this block was. Number 19, a feeling being forced from the spot of the foul, 10 yards, first down. You saw it there at the top of the screen, one of the infractions, but I think the most impressive thing about that whole run was the first step. Yeah. His first step, he was about to get drilled, foot in the ground, immediately cut it upfield. Yeah. And again, Hughes, we talked about earlier in the game, number four and White, who made that tackle as a wide receiver, who has some offers from some smaller schools, but not a D1 offer yet and it's it's it amazes me it's, it might be just his size but what he's put on tape in his career at O'Connor I think he's a division one football player this one's going nowhere for the east good pursuit by a host of west tacklers including Joshua James from Brennan who was in there and he was the first one to kind of blow it up yeah four or five defenders from the west squad playing behind the line of scrimmage on that one. And absolutely, the West defense needs to step up here. They do not want this thing to get a little out of hand going into halftime, already down two scores. Boston Crisp making a play. Young man from Southwest High School. He had a nice season. And look at that speed off the edge for the sack. That's number 38, and that's Jonathan Thompson out of MacArthur. Yeah, the speed off the edge was something else. How about the strength to reach out and bring down the quarterback? Good play all the way around. Exactly what the West needed. Big play on defense, kind of you know, stop the ebb and flow with what the East has been able to do here offensively, and then hey, you can burn a timeout, maybe you get the ball back and see if you can do something with it to end the first half. Thompson was a second team all district performer there, Northeast District. 6'3, 225. So he's fantastic. Hey, it's time for our uh, congratulations to the Brandeis Marching Band. They're the winner of the TNL $5,000 band grant. It was based on your votes. And again, thanks to the $5,000 grant made possible by our friends and sponsors at Sprouts Farmer's Market. Congratulations, Brandeis, the winner of the band grant that we promoted all year long, and they were fantastic. We saw some bands on 600 people strong this year, and Brandeis was really, really good. Aren't these guys too young to remember the Macarena? Going deep, Ryan Redding down the sideline looking for Woodard. He's got it, he's gonna score. Trayvon Mayrick Woodard from Smithson Valley took it away from the defender and a great ball by Ryan Redding. Well, we didn't say there were too many plays in the playbook on third and 20, but when in doubt, that's what you said off the top. Yeah. Know your athletes. Larry Hill knows that it's his own from Smithson Valley. Well, put him in a position to excel. Look at this. Ball thrown inside and Trayvon doing a really good job working his way up the field and then cutting back towards the football once he got his hands on the ears. Look at this. Totally setting him up outside. Breaks back inside. Finds the ball and makes a reservation for six. <laughs> That's fun to watch. Hotchkiss for another PAT, and it is good. And... It's 24 to 7 East. Thanks to Trayvon Merrick Woodard. You see, he was an honorable mention All Stater. Committed to TCU midway through his senior season. And you can see his size 6'1, 200. And he'll play DB, I would think, in that TCU defensive scheme. And got a chance to talk to Gary Patterson a little bit during the, uh, the uh, Valero Alamo Bowl week down at the pep rally, and he said he loved San Antonio, that San Antonio gave him Derek Kindred, among others, and they've got the kid from Reagan, who they turned in from a quarterback. Uh, 42, I'm missing his name right now. Playing, started at linebacker for him this year. Yeah, Ty Summers. Thank you, Mark Kusenberger. 
Ty Summers has grown tremendously, figuratively and literally, and Horn Frogs doing a really nice job of recruiting this area. Again, that's a prime example. You know, Ty Summers, he's up to 250 now, playing outside oh, linebacker man. for the Frogs, looking the part, and he's still got another year of eligibility, at, at and the, he's graduated. At the team fiesta, I patted him on the shoulder like, hey, good job, young man, we're proud of you here in San Antonio, and when I did, I thought I was hitting like an a wall object, like a metal <laughs> filing cabinet. I mean, he is just a solid rock. You know, that's the thing I like about what TCU does. I mean, Patterson's going to find a place for you. And it's like, yeah, you can play quarterback up here. Will you get on the field? Who knows? But I'll put you at linebacker and we'll see how that goes. No fair catch called for and returning it across the 35 yard line. It's number 41 for the West squad, and that's Ben Shackelford out of Bandera, tight end. Yeah. And look who made the tackle, TMW. To change his initials to BMW. He's first class. Special, man. Special talent. Saw it with Justin Stockton a couple years ago. There's just some guys who just pop. And he, he's one of them. New quarterback out there for the West. That's Vitt firing out to the left-hand side, incomplete. So you, Tyler Vitt doesn't get cheated, does he? <laughs> to go out, you better have two pairs of gloves on. If you're a wide receiver, you're going to get a finger split. See if we can go down to Mike Hernandez, see what the play calls are like for Vitt. Tall thrower going over the middle deep and it's intercepted nobody there except for the west squad and that's will evil out of navarro what a fantastic story that young man is he led navarro to a deep playoff run at quarterback and safety he's gonna play safety at brown university and the coaches today in a really good article in the san antonio express news Larry Hill couldn't have been more impressive. This young man right here, he's playing at Navarro at 4A school. He could play anywhere. 6'3", rangy, fantastic quarterback. Look at his numbers throwing the football. Started as a freshman at uh, Navarro, over 4,000 yards. He's going to be an Ivy Leaguer and a safety at the next level. Uh, school must be important to him, unlike us. <laughs> Good for him. And the East back in business with 101 left. You know Larry Hill's going to try to score again. He throws it to the outside. And let's talk about two. One of Mike uh, Larry's, Larry Hill's guys with Mike Hernandez down there. And that's Woodard, who has been the star of the game so far. Mike? Yeah, Trayvon just scored the touchdown. Explosive, man. That was that was a thing of beauty. Looks like he stole it right out, right from under him. Yeah, it was a good throw. Uh, by our QB and uh, you know, I just went up and tried to uh, make a play and I did so. Okay, so you're going to TCU now just Lost his mind. an amazing fit for uh, for TCU. Yeah, they're a great school, a great coach, they have great players, great tradition, and uh, I can't wait to go up there and, you know, just be the best I can be. So Good luck in the rest of the game, man, and, and good luck in the future. Okay? Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Bright future for that young man as the East tries to score with 40 ticks left. Clock is running as they... Set up third down and one. You always wonder, you know, watching Trayvon give that interview, when is he going to go to TCU? Because I was talking to Caden Stearns before the game. He's getting ready to go to Texas, graduate, yeah. and go right up there and start working on his college career. Some of these kids start class on Monday at the next level. I was watching that in the Army All-American Bowl. Kids playing quarterback at Clemson, starts class at Clemson on Monday. So you take a guy like that. I mean, that's pretty impressive. You know, what did you do your second semester in your senior year? No, don't tell me. Never mind, we're going to keep this PG. But, you know, I did the same stuff. I had to pass a couple of classes to graduate. <laughs> I think I was in the same canoe, bro. But, I mean, you know, it's, it's just really impressive that these guys are already walking, heading up, going to start their college careers. But that's what's tasked of them nowadays. There was a quarterback from California that's one of the highest ranked players in the country playing in this Army game today. He started his junior season in September. 
but because of his age, he wanted to go ahead and go. And because of his ability and where he's getting looks. He has 10 classes in the spring, two English classes, two, one algebra two, one wow. trigonometry, government physics and all this stuff. He's taking 10 classes in one semester and he's doing his junior and senior year at the same time. And he's gonna graduate in May and then go walk on some campus as the biggest, toughest, best quarterback in the country. You know, and all these kids, I mean, the hours that they put in doing this, and now he's even thinking about Marcus Davenport from UTSA and Stevens High School. I mean, here's a young man that he did what he did on the football field, and more than likely looking at probably being a first round pick, second round at worst. And he took 18 hours this semester so that he could graduate. Yeah. I mean, Amazing. it's just, come on, man. That's superhuman stuff. Talked to him this week. He's out in Carlsbad, California, training for Senior Bowl and the Combine. And the new info on him is the new mocks have him one at 14, one at 18 to the Seahawks. And Albert Breer from Sports Illustrated writing that he will not go any lower than the top 15, according to multiple scouts. So he's not gone only from an, a free agent to a late round pick, to a mid round pick, to a second round pick, to maybe a first round pick, to now a can't miss first half of the first round. Yeah, it's been some sort of ride, but you know, hey, when you when you have the measurables like he has, then you put together a resume like that this year. Fourth down, pump and go. New receiver out there. Caught it, but I believe he was out of bounds, and he was. And that will turn it over on downs. That was Andrew Uresti out of Reagan. And a good throw, but just kind of let him out of bounds. And so the West will get it back with 11 seconds to go and maybe one play over on the 35-yard line. Mike Hernandez. You see Andrew Uresti's numbers from Reagan. He's got some offers. Carnet Word, Trinity, Texas State. Good size, 6'2", yeah. 180. Another guy had a great junior year and followed it up with an outstanding senior campaign. UIW, Trinity, and Texas State amongst the schools. Kicking the tires on Andrew. Come up with a good player if they get him. All right, so. Let's see something tricky here. Brooks Klutz in it, quarterback from Bernie. He's got one play. Hands it off inside. Nice little run. Do they have a timeout? Will they burn it? They're going to let it tick down, and that's going to be halftime after a nice run right there by Jonathan Thompson. Check that, Sean Ruiz out of Southwest on the carry, and that'll bring us to halftime with our score, the East 24, the West 7. Got lots planned for you on our halftime show. Good football game so far, great talent. We're coming back with much more right after this. Welcome to the University Health System Halftime Show. Welcome to the University Hospital Halftime Show. Earlier this week, a group of U.S. Army All-Americans got the chance to visit University Hospital to lift the spirits of some patients and their families. Our cameras were there. Let's take a look. It's really important for University Health System to be in the community and to really show people that we are here helping our patients and uh, patient care is very important to us, but really showing our patients uh, what's out in the community and um, having the football team here was a great asset to them to show them that we're providing care as well as assistance out in the community. These are young uh, men who are in their formidable years and to see them interacting with young patients um, is just 
heartwarming. San Antonio is a military city, is a military city, so we're really proud to have the All-American football team here, as well as representatives from uh, the Army. Uh, they were very generous in giving of their time today as well, and bringing some smiles to our children um, here the, in the hospital. It means a lot. It's a blessing to come out here, and um, really they lift our spirits because uh, the fight that they go through every day lets me know that none of my problems is as big as others, so it um, keeps me grateful and it's to keep me pushing forward to reach dreams. This has just been incredible. It's a real eye-opening experience just to see what others go through today, and just it's just a real honor to be here just amongst these brave kids. This isn't just about football. It's just about the community that I grow up in and being able to affect the people that are here. It means a lot to him. Um, he's been playing football since he was three, so going into the seventh grade and being told, you know, that he couldn't play this year was a big, was really hard on him. So it, it gives him a lot of inspiration to be out here and to get back on the field. So that's something that he's really looking forward to. Well, it's been great just coming in and kind of visiting all the kids. I mean, we have a ton in common. Uh, just feeling, just kind of trying to lift their spirits and just trying to have make them have a good day. It's amazing coming into this, this hospital and seeing these kids smile, it's just, just a smile, it, how they're so bright and, and the situations they're, they're faced with. I'm definitely blessed to be in the position I'm in. It just makes you say, hey, you can't take anything for granted, right? Tomorrow's never promised. And so um, just showing that, hey, these kids are extremely resilient and you just got to make sure you make the most out of every moment that you have with your loved ones. We're just super proud the boys were here. Thank you for them coming to visit University Hospital today with our children. You're watching the San Antonio Sports All-Star Football Game presented by AGB. And welcome back, everybody. I'm joined by a very special gentleman representing San Antonio Sports President and CEO, Russ Bookbinder. <laughs> Wonderful event. I know you guys do this all the time. Uh, for folks that don't know what San Antonio Sports is all about, could you give, give them just kind of a brief overview? We're a nonprofit, and our mission is to transform the community through the power of sport. And we do that in three different areas. Events that impact, events like this. Uh, we work on a school park program. We have uh, John L. Santico's Foundation has really helped us uh, turning elementary school playgrounds into small community parks. We work with the city and council districts. And then we take care of kids. We work with after-school programs, teaching kids in 48 elementary schools, 1,200 kids that are underserved, sports, the principles of sports, many other things. But uh, you know, our, our, our job is to use sport as a tool to transform this community. And you do that so, so well, and you've done it for so long. For example, this is the 40th annual All-Star Game. This is great. It is. The, the Olmos Kiwanis Club started this 40 years ago. We picked it up five years ago. We moved it to the Dome, worked with the Army All-American Bowl folks, and really it honors the seniors in this city and the surrounding counties that perform well, high character kids, gives them a chance to be seen uh, by coaches and scouts. Um, and those that don't have scholarships yet, a lot of them get signed right out of this game. Some are going to major D1 colleges, as you see some of the performances tonight. Yeah, my, my nephew for one. Years ago, he played in one of these games, and he got a scholarship out of that. So it does work, and it makes a difference. And so, you know, you, the kids are out there playing, but it, it does make a difference maybe in their future. Absolutely. So, HEB has been marvelous in helping us put this on. So what's next? What, what are you guys, you guys went for so many things. What's well, next? The, the next couple of things is we have the San Antonio Sports Hall of Fame tribute on January 27th. So we'll be inducting Becky Hammond, wow. uh, Mike Mitchell, former Spur, who's passed away two years ago, Gordon Hartman, and then Bill Hansen, who was with San Antonio Sports into the Hall of Fame. And uh, we'll have a group, the four original stars of uh, the Jersey Boys are going to be the entertainment. So it'll be exciting. And then, of course, the final four, comes uh, in late March, early April. That's the next big event. It's great for the city. It's great for the city, and you all and what you all do are, are great thanks, for the city as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, again, San Antonio Sports, and again, sponsoring the 40th annual All-Star Game. It's a great football game, and if you're just joining us now, stay for the second half, because I got the feeling there's a lot more fireworks to come. San Antonio Sports and the U.S. Army are recognizing teams that go beyond the game. 
On February 19th, after a violent tornado swept through San Antonio neighborhoods, the Lee Volunteers football team and coaches went to work clearing yards of tree limbs and storm debris for grateful residents. On August 11th, the Alamo Heights football team and their coaches spent half a day at the San Antonio Food Bank, helping with a variety of projects for this nonprofit that fights hunger. On September 22nd, 11 members of the Clark High School cross-country team traveled to the Texas coast to help with Hurricane Harvey relief. And we recognize students in Southwest High School Fellowship of Christian Athletes for being great role models. They regularly visit elementary schools in their district to motivate and encourage the little kids to make good grades and stay in school. These four teams demonstrated the beyond the game values of selfless service, caring, and respect. San Antonio Sports and the U.S. Army appreciate high school and middle school coaches who inspire their teams to serve others. Watching the San Antonio Sports All-Star Football Game presented by AGB. Hey, it's time for our highlights brought to you by iDreamSA.com, connecting San Antonio teens to opportunity. We had ourselves a football game early. It was tied up 7-7. East got on the board first as Ryan Redding, the East quarterback, did it on his own to put the East up 7-0. But then Chuck, a little trickery from the West is... Tyler Vitt went to Ben Shackelford. Yeah, nice play on fourth down. Got the East team going and subsequently found themselves in the end zone a short time later. Your guy, Clark Cougar, Ben Sims, Baylor Bear tied it up. Marshawn Brown from Clemens made a nice move to give the East a 14 to seven lead. Ryan Hotchkiss has three or four kicks today, extra points and field goals, and that gave him a 17-7 lead. And then Trayvon Mayrick Woodard showing his athletic ability with that fantastic catch, and that's where we stand, 24 to seven. Those are our iDreamSA.com highlights, and as you look, the uh, statistics now starting to really go in favor of the East as well. Yeah, you know, they had, what, three or four drives there resulting in points for the East, and really the backbreaker by Merrick Woodard on that third long, hauling in that touchdown right before the end of the half when it looked like the West was going to get the ball back and have it go, have a chance to go score on their own. But total yards, as you see, he's comfortably out in front in that. First downs as well. And I'm really surprised. I think both of these teams have played a pretty clean game given the fact they only had a week to get this together. All right, let's send it to break. When we come back, we'll have the second half. The East in control right now. They'll have the football when we come back. Thanks for watching the University Health System Halftime Show. Stay tuned for the second half of tonight's game. The San Antonio Sports All-Star Football Game is presented by HEB and sponsored by Frost, Whataburger, CPS Energy, Pizza Hut, University Health System, and Zira, Powerade, Hallmark University, Kiavasa Smoke Meats, Lymphedema MD, Ernest Roofing, Sprouts Farmers Market, ASCO, Countywide Service Company, America's Diamond, High School Music Service, Night Office Solutions, UIW, Pick and Pool, and idreamsa.com. Welcome back inside the Alamo Dome, everybody. The two teams coming back onto the field. The East squad just got out here. The West squad still in the tunnel, making their way onto the field. It's been all East so far and got a couple of standouts. Ryan Redding started eight for eight. With 165 yards for the East squad at quarterback as they got the dance cam going on inside the dome. And of course, uh, Trayvon Mayrick Woodard with a nice kickoff return and also that, that touchdown. And again, many scouts from all over Texas and the rest of the country checking out these kids. And when we say a lot of these kids will get scholarships right on the field after the game, that's been a tradition 
going back all 40 years. Now, we're not talking about the Texas and the A&Ms, but we're talking about places like, uh, like where Mike Hernandez's um, nephew went. It was a small school in Kansas. Uh, junior colleges. Yeah. Uh, not only that, I mean, Don, you know, we looked around the bet, the old college football landscape during the year, and it was really interesting to me to see Sam Houston State mm -hmm. right up there in the final four. Wow. Right? And yeah. how many San Antonio contributors they have from there. You had AM Commerce with over a dozen San Antonio kids. They and do those a great guys, job recruiting San Antonio. Yep, getting to the final four. And then Barry Harden Baylor as well. You know, playing in the national championship game in D3 for the second year in a row. So all those schools have made lots of hay. Harvesting this area, get kids to come up and toil for their school. There's also kids like Jalen Hughes from O'Connor who has a few of those offers, places like Abilene Christian, but is hoping to go to the next level in Division One. Houston has done a very good job recruiting San Antonio this year. They got Jalon Williams out of Judson, the quarterback, and then the fantastic safety from O'Connor. UTSA doing a good job right here at home. And we're talking about the three guys that we had from here, Caden Stearns, of course, going to Texas, and Brendan Brady from Rice, or is going to Rice from Steele, and then Karsten Battles from Johnston, Johnson, who's going to Oregon. Yeah. And those three guys played the U.S. Army All-American Bowl. Yeah, Zaire Taylor, the young man, the safety from O'Connor that's going to Houston. As the kick will be taken by the up man at about the 25-yard line. And a nice job by the West squad to get down there and make the tackle. Making the tackle for the West was Isaiah Paul, the All-State linebacker from Brennan. Now we'll see what the West has here coming up on defense. See if they can get a stop and get the ball back to their offense. And let's go down to Mike Hernandez on the sideline with Coach Kaiser, Mike. Yeah, I got Coach Kaiser here. Coach, so so uh, what did you say inspiring to get him going for the second half? Make plays. I mean, you know, what we talk about, how we can't play the score of the game. We've got to play the game. You know, if, if we start worrying about a score, then it makes two, each play too big for us right now. And, and our big focus th during halftime, just play that play. Play the game and then let the score work itself out. You know, and, and we've been in good position. They've just made plays, and, and we haven't, you know, we made one on the punt, but, uh, you know, they, they had a great first drive and then hit some big plays, so we just got to settle in and, and play a little bit better. So you're not going to really change things up uh, offensively? Are you, are you going to open it up a little more, you think? You know, we will, but, you know, we've, we've got to get out of second and tens. We've got to get in second and fives and, and third and shorts. You know, we've had two bad snaps that have cost us some series, and then that wasn't the cost of the series, but it hurt. Uh, and we're just playing, the tough part is we're just playing second and longs and third and longs, and that's not good. It's kind of like that right there. I'm better than you. <laughs> and, and we were right there. We, we were right there to make the play. So, uh, but we will. We'll keep plugging along. Okay, one quick question. How, what has this experience been? You, you mentioned to me off camera, uh, you know, before the game, but what has it been like to coach these kids this week? You know, it's been awesome just because They've all come in with great attitudes. They've, they've been, uh, they've worked hard. I mean, kids are playing basketball, they're playing soccer, and they're coming right from those practices to our practice with, with great attitudes. And uh, it's it's been a pleasure because they've all created some friendships here. All of a sudden, you know, they compete against each other for a long time, and now uh, they get to line up next to each other and pat each other on the back and. Uh, it's been it's been exciting. It's, it's what a great group of guys. All right. Well, listen. We'll catch up in a few minutes, and, we and uh, we'll see when we get the, when the West gets the ball back, and We're see, and do see a what we can do. Touchdown dance here in a second. Okay. We'll get the ball. Huh. okay well, right. I'll have the camera Holy. ready. Yeah. <laughs> All right, back to you guys. You. Five Thanks, penalty. Mike. Still first down. Brock Pittman calling a penalty. Great pass from Ryan Redding to Brandon McDuffie. 39 yards set this one up all the way down to the 28 yard line and. We had a hold, basically a tackle there by the East's Colby Harris from Judson. Yeah, the West doing a really nice job swarming to the football, stopping that play, but you're right on the play getting down there. My goodness, what a play by Brandon McDuffie. 
to go fight through two defenders and come down with that football. Redding now nine for nine for over 200 yards. And he's just missed, I just jinxed him. And here comes the late penalty. Oh, you want to stop the incomplete, that's how you do it. <laughs> it's interfered. It never, never happened. Like being fouled on an attempt. Redding having a nice game here. I'll say making an early claim for our MVP on Pass interference on the defense, number 23. Ball being placed in the spot of the foul. First down. Take another look at the play. Ball right on the money, but right up his back and definitely interference there. Israel Powell from Marshall on the coverage. Reading on first down and 10. Fires over here, got a man wide open to the 20, to the 10. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you 31. I'm with you. I'm 31. With you. you know, when we threw it down to Mike Hernandez, we missed one of his plays where he crushed somebody. 31 is going to play somewhere. I'm telling you, this kid brings the wood. He's done out of post with the catch. And then yeah, look Jaime, at Jaime Ramirez. I was just thinking, you know, <laughs> we have any trouble getting to our car after the game for whatever reason somebody wants to I love on Jaime us. Ramirez, I'm going to go get 31. I love him. I want Golly. 31 on my team, too. Redding fires, same type play, caught. And this time it's done again, brought down. Young man from Post, Texas, 6'4", 215. Small school, big kid. That time Ryan Redding really hanging in there, faked the run, threw the ball on the RPO, and he took a shot afterwards. We're in the high school music service red zone now at the five yard line. Got second down and goal for Redding. He's got Keith Jefferson from Judson split out to the left. Hands it off inside and pushing his way to the two before being pushed back is Marshawn Brown out of Clemens. Yeah, the defensive line for the West you know, doesn't look on the scoreboard, but these guys have really done a nice job stopping just about every single run. It's Carlos Campos out of Memorial, and what a fantastic story they were in high school football this year. Going from Ofer for a few years there at Memorial to winning their district. Campos, one of the big leaders, doing a nice job. This looks like a cramp. Hopefully that's all it is. We'll take a break. When we come back, it'll be third and two for the East. There's Jaime Ramirez, the kid we were talking about, who was helped off the field. Meanwhile, it's third down and goal for Ryan Redding, who's got a man in motion from Judson. Redding's going to keep. He's already got one touchdown, and now he's got another. Ryan Redding with two rushing touchdowns and nine for nine passing for over 200 yards, throwing the football. Unicorns in the house. Well, we talked about ad nauseum this kid's ability to get the ball downfield. How about the footwork down here? Nice. Quick stop and go. The East now starting to put some real room between themselves and the West squad. 31 to 7 if the PAT is true. Ryan Hotchkiss counting his teammates to make sure. He's got a busy day. The young man out of San Antonio Christian. And... Larry Hill's calling a timeout. <laughs> Larry Hill's, he's fired up. Coach not like happy about it. Playoff game, man. Didn't get the right number of guys out there. At 10, he tried to run the 11th out there, but not quite, so he had to burn one. He's up 31 to 7. <laughs> oh. I tell you what, Larry Hill, one of the most intense competitors you'll ever see, and it's translated into years and years of success out at Smith and Valley. He's like, all right, who didn't remember they were supposed to go in on that? Because whoever it was might get some upbacks during this game. <laughs> uh, no, but I mean, that's part of why he's had so much success. I mean, it's just yeah. no stone unturned, attention to detail, 
do what you've been coached to do and don't go into business for yourself. I, I tell you what, one of my favorite Larry Hill stories, we were doing a TNL game four or five years ago. He walked up to me and goes, what time are we kicking off? And I said, I think coach is 7-10. 7-10, I was told 7-08. And I said, okay, same thing, right? <laughs> and he's like, no, everything we did today was predicated on a 7-08 kickoff. So you're right, he's got what Even time the two minutes what means something to They him. mean something. That one's blocked. It's still loose. It's still loose, and the West have a chance to return it. But it'll be right there at the 20-yard line. But yeah, the bus has to leave at a certain time. You go through your pregame at a certain time, and two minutes makes a difference. All right, when we come back, it's all East. 8.58 left here in the third. Ryan Hotchkiss suffers his first miss of the day, and it was a jailbreak for that West front line who got in there and blocked it, and then it looked like the old NFL bloopers. Yeah, they got through. Nice little push there. I think Ezreal Powell from Marshall was the one that blocked it, but Isaiah Paul from Brennan also went on there. But, again, those big beasties up front clearing the way for the athletes to get through there and snuff out that extra point. It's our CPS Energy cheer cam. The Brennan cheerleaders on hand. As Hotchkiss will put his foot into this one, he'll drive it all the way down to the 10-yard line. And that's where it'll be brought back and doing a nice job running it down. Is number 19 from the East squad. That's Mason Pierce out of Smithson Valley, and he had that one tracked from the get-go. That was a really nice play coming around from the outside. So it looked like the West had that all set up to go left. He's got unbelievable speed, that young man, Mason Pierce. According to our scout, Mark Kusenberger, he runs 4-5. That's picking him up and putting him down. Tyler Vitt from MacArthur going to Texas State again in that running at quarterback. Turns and hands to Moore, who's got some room right up the middle. Bounces off a couple of tackers, a first down. Nice gain by Devin Moore out of Warren High School. 5'9", 171. Picks up 13. Nice burst to get into the line. This is kept by Vitt. He was looking for somebody to run over. And he and Will Evel from Navarro on a collision course. That's quarterback on quarterback crime there. Uh, Tyler Vitt, our Whataburger player profile. 6'2", 205 pounds and 59 touchdowns. Wow. That a boy. He's booting out and he's looking for Hughes and it's intercepted. He's inbounds. That's going the other way there. They're not going to give it to him? Oh, my. Awful close. Darius Van Dyke from Clemens says, hey, I got that. Let's take a look at it. He's pointing to the, to the, oh, he's out. He's out. His right foot was out. Good call. Oh, wait, now they're giving it to him. Watch his right foot. His right foot's out of bounds. He brought it back in bounds. The officials here using replay. Look, watch number five is out right there. No ball yet. He brings it back in bounds in a step. I don't know. They're going to say he established himself. They're giving it to him. What do you think, Chuck? Yeah, I've watched that three times, and I still don't know. I don't know the I mean, rule right. about it's establishing yourself back in bounds. He was out at first when the ball wasn't in his possession. Here's another look. Watch his right foot is out right there. But he doesn't have the ball yet. He still doesn't have the ball. Still doesn't have the ball. Now he's got the ball and he brings it back in bounds. Eh, looks like he's on the line. Yeah, I guess <laughs> what, the ball's still in the air. If his foot is on the bounds, er, out yeah. of bounds when he touches it, that's the end of the play. Looks like they had it right the first time. They run the sweep coming this way to the 40. It's battles to the 35. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> hey, we're getting a little too close to that sideline here. Don't want to hurt somebody. No, not this guy. Game. He's got basketball and baseball left to go. Played a basketball game today. This guy is all world. 
Baseball pitcher, extraordinaire, good basketball player. Yeah, he's got a cannon for an arm. It would be nice to see him throw one today if he could. I wanted to watch him punt, but he hadn't had a reason to on the East. Nice move and another nice tackle. That time coming up for the West and putting a big hit was Joshua James out of Brennan. And one of the stars of the day is the hard-hitting safety from Holy Cross. Jaime Ramirez has really stood out today. And Mike Hernandez is standing by with him. Yeah, and, and that's what I was just telling him. I mean, I hate to say that, that he's, he's kind of done for the day, but it's good news. It's just a sprain, right? Yes, sir, it's just a sprain. Thank right. you for that. You've really been getting your money's worth out there. Yes, sir. Just playing with all my heart just to showcase my talent. So I, I think you've done that, even though you're going to probably take most of the rest of the second half off. What are, what are your plans moving forward? Um, I am going to AM Corpus Christi for baseball. I have committed there uh, since my sophomore year. And um, that's where yeah, I'm going there for college. You, you mean you actually are a better baseball player than yes, a football sir. player? Yes, sir, I am. What position do you play? I'm a pitcher. I'm a lefty. Wow. Hey, yeah, those are hard to find. Yes, sir. Speaking. <clears throat> Got the old left. <laughs> well, listen, good luck to you, and, and hopefully this will heal real quick, and you'll be back running around and pitching and doing whatever you do. Thank you. Okay, God bless. Take care. Thank you, sir. Very nice. It's an HEB first down for the East squad. Handoff inside to Brown, and got chalk, and now Ramirez, we know, are going to be playing baseball at Texas Corpus Christi. Yeah, a lot of these guys, you know, we've seen it all over town. Guys that are, play football, play another sport. Really interesting, and that's, you know, it's the same thing in baseball, you know. Big kids get the big scholarships, but that's the beauty of baseball. All you got to do is look at Jose Altuve. If you can play, <laughs> he'll find you. And we can tell this kid's got a heart just by how much noise. I Every time he's made a tackle tonight, I've heard it up here in the booth. And, yeah, he stands out. He certainly does. Good for him. Going on to college and playing baseball. Throws a little low, but caught. They whistle it down. It did hit the ground. This official on the far side saw it. Not quite able to bring it in. It was Brandon McDuffie, who's had a nice game here today. Yeah, Joseph Palafo's back in the game. And I really can't say enough about the job that he and his cohorts have done at Highlands over the last couple of years, last three years. You know, to, to be able to resurrect that program and... New heights over there for the Owls under a couple of different coaches. Really speaks to the quality of kid that they've got there. Second, make it third down and long. Palafos fires the slant and it's caught by McDuffie. He wasn't down yet. I guess he kneeled down on top of a player. So Brandon McDuffie, a little short of the first down. He's had a nice game too. We talked about the catch that he made on the last series that set up the previous touchdown how about that go over for a slant you're contacted and it takes about four guys to bring you down yeah he did a, he's done a nice job here inside the high school music service red zone is the east again lead it 30 to 7 here jacob palafos from highlands in and now the west wants to take a timeout to talk it over we'll take it with them east on top 30 to 7 fourth and one big play when we come back on the CW35. Welcome back to the Alamo Dome. It's an America's Diamond Smile, Cam, and young and old alike having a good time. Classmates, teammates on to support their friends as Marshawn Brown from Clemens bounces down near the five. Looks like they're going to mark him at the nine. Marshawn Brown doing a really nice job at the end of that run. Picked up two yards. Just bouncing off a player who was already on the ground. 16,342 the attendance today. Nice turnout here for the 40th anniversary of this All-Star game. Palafos still has it, keeping. He turns up inside. Touchdown, Jacob Palafos from Highlands High School. 36-7, the East scores again. Saw that a time or two over the last two years, whether it was Joseph Palapos or their star running back who's also here today. Renee Palomino, yep. Good job going with the flow, got some blocks out there. Nice job hustling out there on the outside by 
Mason Pierce from Smithson Valley. A little double duty. I tell you what, they're about to wear out Ryan Hotchkiss, the kicker from San Antonio Christian. He's been out there a lot. Get a chance to show his stuff. Another one right down the middle. That's the ice's foot. And it's 37 to 7. Somebody brought another picture of their friend, brother, family member. Palafos does a great job of finishing that run and extending the ball over the goal line for another touchdown. And I think it was cool what Coach Kaiser said about the uh, opportunity to make a lot of new friends this week. And you see guys who've competed against each other, chest bumping and high-fiving. That's a fun thing to see as that drive took up eight plays and 48 yards and three minutes off the clock. We've got 5.13 left here in the third quarter, and it's been all east. Yeah, it's interesting you say that. You, Palapos gets the punch from Highlands, and then the first guy over to congratulate him is Tristan Fuentes from Harlandale. A couple of guys have probably competed against each other from time to time. Get a chance to hook up and stick one in for the East. Ethan Barron out of Brennan. Deep snapper, his family waving cards and having a lot of fun here today. It's, Hotchkiss has done a good job all day of kicking it inside the 10 yard line, showing off not only his accuracy with those extra points and a field goal of 22 yards, but also his strength. And that one again is going to sail right to the 10. Bringing it out across the 30-yard line is number five for the West, and that's Jalen Griffin out of Brandeis. 5'10", 170. All-district performer. Yeah, he had a huge game on that Hallmark U game we did earlier this year, TNL. Got the end zone a couple times in that game. So the West really starting to try to rally here and get something going offensively. Heard Coach Keith Kaiser say earlier that uh, a little frustrated by watching the scoreboard and worried about trying to get it all back at once. This guy's not going to get flustered. It's Roel Sanchez back in the game at quarterback and talks so much about his leadership qualities as he turns and hands off inside. And that one's swallowed up pretty good by that East defense. C.J. Keeler from Smithson Valley in there to stop him short. Yeah, and Cedric Hernandez too, man. Those big guys have really done the job up front for the East so far today. You're off, you're off. Second down, eight. And run it himself is Sanchez. It's across the 30, so it's a gain of about four before he's brought down, and we've got a flag down on the play. Call for a face mask. Personal foul, face mask on the defense, number 91. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run, first down. Also need to acknowledge some of those big guys up front who've been making it happen, and making it happen. Some of them going on to the next level, including Ryan Booth from Churchill, big number 78. Lenny Dominguez from Warren. A lot of 280, 290, 300 pounders up there. Ernest Hernandez from South San as well. Big guys up front leading the way for Royal Sanchez and company. High snap brought in. Sanchez steps up in the pocket. Look at him direct traffic and look at the perfect oh. throw on the run and out of bounds. Seeing what we saw all year long from Royal Sanchez as he completes it to Quentin Starks out of Warren. But just a great job to direct traffic and then the perfect touch to drop it in there. Carter Brew putting all kinds of pressure on him. Number 90 from the east side. Royal just doing a great job keeping the play alive and then outstanding touch. Running for his life back there. Little reverse coming this way. Across the 25, down to the 20, and diving out of bounds at about the 17 is 
Jalen Griffin from Brandeis. Cody Nelson doing a really good job going sideline to sideline to force that one out of bounds, but there's the throw. <laughs> that was Cody Nelson trying to get that Aaron hand up to knock that ball away, but nothing he could do with that. That ball was dimed in there. Nice catch. Quentin Starks has a couple of offers from Mary Harden, Baylor, and Waldorf. Inside handoff, not going very far, maybe a yard or two. And that is the ball carrier's Edward Perez from Southside, 5'8", 180. We're getting to see some of the other guys getting a chance to play. Yeah. Edward and his Southside squad, they had a nice year too. Yeah, they did. Absolutely. West now back in the high school music service red zone. Diego Vela in it running back. We've seen him a couple years on TNL, and he's a rugged back. And they're going to take a timeout, and West offensive staff wants to talk this one over. Well, you're right about Diego Vela. Remember that last year when he was a junior? Dominated the opener. Yeah, I remember. He was like the third string back going into that game. Their starter got hurt, then the backup got hurt during the game. Next thing you know, old Diego, Diego was playing his behind off in that game. I don't remember if he was our player of the game or not, but he had a monster game against Quark in that Gucci Bowl last year. And, hey, that set his career off and running. 1,800 yards the last couple of years. Look at that. Six yards of carry. Finished off 15 drives. He's a load, boy. Yeah, and just deceptive. Yeah, and, and he's low to the ground. And because of that, you don't think he's very fast because he looks like a fire hydrant. But Speed he's, bump. He, yeah, he's he is really quick inside the tackles. And then he's got some nice moves and some breakaway speed. And he looks like he's put on some weight since opening week. And uh, and it, and if you try to attack him, he yeah. will he will run you over. Yeah. Or buy you. He's got the whole package. To see him get the football. Third down and four probably won't get it here. Take it to him on a play action. Sanchez has his options. He's better get rid of it, and he does it, and he's sacked. Coming from behind, it didn't get the name of the Alex license Brown. plate of that truck. Yeah, Alex Brown. Well, I don't think Roel did either. The internal clock was going off. Look at 56. Oh, yeah, going to get me a quarterback at the end of this one. That is a very large human being with some wheels. Tracking, tracking, smacking. Fourth down, Wes with no choice <laughs> than like to go for it <laughs> here. Sanchez fires, deep ball, and just through the hands of the intended receiver, and that's Alexander Wise from Brennan, and he just couldn't quite bring it in. Another good throw by Roel Sanchez, who's showing off his touch tonight. Yeah, Alexander Wise doing a really good job getting open. Let's see how Sanchez has been under duress most of the day. Takes another shot from 56 for good measure. Good route. Just can't quite bring it in there at the end. Alexander Wise, 6'2", 190 receiver, has an offer from the Air Force Academy. 95 catches, 20 touchdowns. It's a heck of a high school career, isn't it? He's also a basketball player, so he's going to have some options as Ryan Redding comes back in at quarterback for the East. Sweep to the near side. That's Marshawn Brown from Clemens. And he's brought down from behind. Big number 98, Taylor Posey from Brant Bernie Champion there to bring him down. Yeah. Really impressed by Marshawn Brown. Didn't get to see many of his games, but I'll tell you what, you know, we did that steel game, that Clemens steel game that meant so much towards the end of the year. And well, I'll tell you what, he really stood up and Made himself quite a name for himself that night. Palomino from Highlands doing a great job to pick up the first down. See how shifty he is. Man, he, he, he's put up some of the bigger games in TNL history. And that kid just runs wild. 
in the SAISD district. I mean, it's one of those things, it's almost like a little magician back there. It's like, now you see me, now you don't. Quick of the hand, just, you, you think you have him. Next thing you know, he's down the field on me. First down and 10 for the East. It's 37 to seven ball game, Redding having a run for his life, being chased, wants to throw, and now we'll just chunk it out of bounds. That's the right move, set up second down and 10. Yeah, good coverage on the back end. Carlos Covarrubias from Burbank. That's his first official incomplete pass for Ryan Redding, who went 11 for 11 to start. Thrown for 260 yards and a touchdown and run for two. Can you say Whataburger MVP? I was thinking the same thing. Inside handoff. There he goes. Palomino across the 50. You see this kid at 145 pounds, you think, how's that guy doing that to us? But he is so shifty and quick. I would love to see him get a chance to play somewhere if he wants to. I'll tell you what, if you're a Trinity or an incarnate word, I'll tell you what, he can help you. It's an yeah, you run out, first down. Run out of superlatives with a kid. I mean, it's just, we've seen it time and time and time and time and time and time again. Four wide split. Ready, fires up to the outside. It's caught, breaking one tackle and picking up about four or five is for the first time tonight, our first look at number 89. And that's Colton Payne out of Floresville. He's a kick returner and a wide receiver. Another small guy at 5'10", 150, but he's put up good numbers over 1,100 yards receiving in his career and 11 touchdowns. Yeah, if you make a play like that, you got to get a block and felt walls from Roosevelt doing his part outside to help pick up four on that play. The East in control, 37-7. That's the end of the third quarter. We're back with the final stanza after this. We're back, it's the start of the fourth quarter with the East on top, 37 to seven. Ryan Redding leading this East squad on another drive down the field. We'll see if we can eavesdrop a little bit into the staff calls from Coach Larry Hill and see if we can get a couple of play calls. Mike Hernandez down on the sideline as Redding fires deep, got a man, whoa, nice shot. And just out of the reach of Keith Jefferson from Judson High School. Nice clean pocket to throw that football. And 15 yard penalty, first down. Larry Hill's still letting it all hang out. Let's go down to Mike Hernandez and see if he can eavesdrop in there, oh. Mike. Yeah, guys, we're here on the east sideline, and this is Coach Hill right here. Coach, you got a 30 point lead. I, I, I know you're really into the game here. It, it's not over for y'all yet. No, you want to keep playing, as does the West team. And of course, we got a lot of kids trying to get everybody in the game, get oh, them some sure. meaningful playing time. So we're still going hard. All right, what do you what are you seeing so far? Well, I think you know we've got some explosive players at receiver. You know, a lot of kids have made plays. You know, just sometimes it's uh, there and we execute well, and sometimes they just do something like that right there. Really, nothing special there. A little short throw, but yet he makes eight yards just on an easy running catch. That's the Jefferson kid from Judson, fine ball player. Okay, so what's the next call, you think? Well, Coach Shen's down there, my guess. Let me see if I can determine uh, uh, from the formation what we think we're going to run here. We've got a lot of guys going in and out of the game, as you can tell, so it's a little bit of a Chinese fire drill, but <laughs> I've really been impressed with both teams' ability not to have 12 in the huddle or, or false starts or offsides or delay of games, things that typically are pretty prevalent in a game like this. Yeah, they've been pretty disciplined. I've, it, I've noticed uh, that, too. Yeah, I think both teams have done well. They've had a good week of practice. A tribute to their high school programs as well. Let's see what we run here. 
This is a jet sweep to, to, to Mason Pierce from Smithson Valley. Same just what we're talking about. You know, makes a couple of yards there, even though uh, there's nothing there. Nothing there. So, you know, a lot of times in, in the regular season, but certainly in games like this, sometimes it's players, not plays. Right. In other words, who who can we get the ball to and give them an opportunity to impact the play? And we got we're fortunate we got a lot of guys that can do something with it. All right, so you have uh, of course you have Woodard that uh, you have on your team. How's it like coaching him? Well, it's been great. It's been great to do it one more time. He's got a great future, obviously, at TCU. He's impacted the game today on defense, of course, on offense with the big catch, uh, and of course uh, on special teams. He's played well with a punt return. You know, again, you know, I think. He's just one of those special players that has a knack of every time he's involved in the play. If he's the one that's going to determine the outcome of the play, it's usually going to go well for Smithson Valley. Have you uh, have you had a good time this week with Kiss? Yeah, it is. It has been real fun. You know, I've been really impressed with him. Not prima donnas. Nobody's worried about who's rolling in and out, and that's unusual because these guys are the best players at their school. And then the, the ability to come together in five days and, and befriend guys who formerly were adversaries. And uh, it's been a great experience for them and the coaches. We've really enjoyed coaching them. It's a tribute to their high school coaches at their school because that's not the norm. You know what I'm saying? Normally, there's there another, we go. Yeah, Walls, kid from Roosevelt, just a simple throw and catch, and then I go run after the catch. So, but that's a trip. How these kids are, that's a tribute to their high school staffs around San Antonio. You don't make a kid be high character in five days. That's something they came to us with already. All right, Coach. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right. And I'll let you, you get back over there. Right. To, we'll, we'll talk to you in just a little bit. Again, the East uh, ahead now 43-7 to with the extra point coming. Don, Chuck. Yep. Nice play by Felton Walls. The Roosevelt Rough Rider. Chuck, good route, and then spun out of it and walked in from there. I'm really impressed with the throw, too, because quarterback saw that the pressure was going to come over the top looked like the defender was working his way back inside he threw it outside and took it to the house Ryan Hotchkiss right leg is not worn out yet 45 7 and Ryan Redding from New Braunfels has been on the money today another touchdown pass for the East Welcome back to the Alamo Dome. You know, all year we had our San Antonio cheer challenge. And here's a look at the, the rankings. Medina Valley and Brennan finished third and fourth. It was Marshall and Canyon Lake, the top two vote getters. And because they were the leading vote getters all year long with our CPS Energy cheer challenge, they all got to be here today for both the Army All-American Bowl and the San Antonio Sports all-star game presented by HEB. So again, our thanks to CPS Energy for Cheer Cam and for the Cheer Challenge. And congratulations to all those squads for representing their schools here today. Ryan Hotchkiss on to kick it away. He's up 44 to seven. Felton Walls clapped, capped off that drive with a touchdown catch. Running it to the middle of the field and now throwing back a little trickeration to Jalen Hughes. The young man from O'Connor takes it across the 25 and again, well coached Eats squad didn't buy it and stayed at home. Yep, Brandon McDuffie from Johnson High School. We've seen him on the offensive side making a play on special teams right there. Mayrick Woodard back in the game at safety. You see him catch a touchdown pass. And this is where he's going to play college football either at the corner or at the safety and number one you can watch on this series just really stands out from a defensive perspective yeah, it's been tough sliding for the West to say the least today on both sides of the ball but you know, chance for some kids to get involved here late Roel Sanchez is in at wide receiver going up against Woodard on the top of your screen right by the Ian Countywide, it's a countywide service first down. They're one on one up there at the top. Sanchez in it at receiver. Top quarterback in town this year, the Express News Offensive Player of the Year. They run it his way. Woodard shakes off his block and makes the tackle. See how physical Woodard is as well. He wasn't the only one physical on that play. Ben Shackelford from Bandera. 
tight end for the West. I think he moved his guy 20 yards side to side. <laughs> Number 41. Some guys still balling out here at the end. Now they move him over to quarterback, Sanchez. He's got Hughes to the right, Goschalk at the top of the screen. Looks to his right, throws the slant over the middle, is almost picked off into triple coverage. And coming up and making a nice play with number 21 on the East, and that's Isaac Mendiola from Pleasanton. First time we've been able to call his name tonight as we go down to the sidelines and Mike Hernandez, Mike. Hey, check this out. I'm on the east side. I've got the most of the offensive line here. Try to look shorter, guys, okay? All right. You guys had a good game today. Introduce yourself. Tristan Fuentes. What school? Hardendale. Charles Zeno, State High School. Brandon Smith from Reagan. Dwayne Anthony Madison. Your, your mom and dad were over there. We were like, <laughs> talk to Dwayne. Kobe Harris Judson. Brennan Canespo, Antonian. Weston Wright, New Braunfels. Spencer Burford Wagner. Jacob Foster, Canyon Lake. All right, so you, I, I know you guys are in good shape, and, and you obviously eat well. Uh, what's y'all's secret, man? How do you get this? How do you grow them this big? Biscuits and gravy. Biscuits and gravy. I love it. <laughs> All right, well, good luck to y'all. Huh? Water and sunlight. Water and sunlight. For some, biscuits and gravy for others. All right, back to you guys. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Now, what's interesting, Chuck, <laughs> Chuck, you were all over that. You know, you know why? All of those guys are big, but the one guy going D1 out of that group was Burford. And did you see the size of him compared to the others? Spencer Burford is a large human being. He's going to play at number 73 right there. He's going to play at UTSA. And uh, that's what a Division I football player looks like. Yeah, a couple of those guys getting looks. Foster, kid that didn't have his pads on. Maybe an Air Force guy. But, Don, I know you know this from all the years you've been covering football, too. You want to get some funny stuff, or the guys that have the best sense of humor, or probably the smartest guys on the team, go get the offensive line. That's true. Those are the guys where it's at most of the time. They are witty, they are funny, they are well-educated, well-read most of the time, and very, very smart, and don't get the credit they deserve. They call them the big uglies and all of that, but especially when you get to the college and NFL levels, those guys are very bright. Yeah, and, and all as a group, usually selfless, too. Don't hear much from them. You know, obviously, get their name called on TV only when they do something wrong. But by and large, as a group, fun to be around. Jalen Hughes has it in space. Made a man miss. Nice game for the young man from O'Connor High School. Again, I'm, in lo I'm lobbying. Jalen's my guy. I'm lobbying for him to get a D1 look. Some of the schools that have offered him, Southeast Oklahoma, Abilene Christian, and ha Howard Payne, North Washington State, Mary Hart, and Baylor. It's only 5'10", 180. That's the only thing between him. He's 6'2", 200. He's playing at Oklahoma, I think. He's playing for the Packers. First and 10, firing over the middle. That ball is incomplete. Nice defensive coverage there by the kid from Pleasanton. Isaac Mendiola making a play. I'll tell you what, Brooks Klutz in a quarterback from Bernie High School, not an easy throw. Stood in there last second, you know, tough zone you're looking into. And I'll tell you what, he fit that ball in there pretty well. Tough, tough place to try to throw a football and can't do it much better. Second down and 10. Straight drop. Brooks taken off with it. Nice speed to get outside, gets out of bounds. And Bernie's had some good ones. The kid Dormady, who's uh, playing at Tennessee, followed up by another Greyhound here. 5,000 yards passing. <laughs> what? 57 another, touchdowns. Another so. 800 on the ground. Get out of here. Nice job there throwing the out route. And that ball was caught. They call it incomplete. Thought he got his hands underneath it. He did not. And the receiver, Alexander Wise from Brennan.
So fourth and two, little doubt here, right? May as well. It's all about getting these kids some exposure now on both sides of the ball. Forget about the final score. Get some kids who haven't played there, both sides of the ball, as you said. Brooks firing a fade straight up for Wise and went up and incomplete. Wise had a tough day. Had a one in the end zone that he couldn't hang on to and nice play there on the coverage by number 19 on the East. And Mason Pierce. It's Mason Pierce from Smithson Valley who's really showed up today. Yeah, he was beaten on the play but never gave up and ran right through the receiver, was able to knock that thing away. Really nice ball there by Brooks Glutes too. Got a timeout on the field as the change of possession will take it with them. And the East will have it back when we come back here to the Alamo Dome. Welcome back to our Whataburger player profile. We talked so much about Miller Bradford off the top of the show. Haven't played much today, if at all. But you see his offers from TCU, Houston, Tulane, Arizona State, and Purdue. Uh, word is, I heard he was leaning towards TCU at the beginning of the season, maybe Houston now. But again, that's a young man who should be playing on Saturdays on television. We'll, we've not heard the last of him. Ball's caught to the outside, running down the sidelines. Good speed and taken out of bounds. Number 89 on the east, and that's Colton Payne out of Floresville. Nice fastball from Joseph Palafos from Highlands High School. Yep, a lot of guys showing up for the east today and executing. You know, these guys look like they had more than five days of work together. Continuity has been unbelievable. And that's another countywide service company first down as we've got six minutes to go here. Palafos making the call. The jet sweep going nowhere and blowing it up. Number 33 for the West. Nice job there is Boston Crisp from Southwest, the Dragon getting through there to blow it up. Take a look at our America's Diamond smile cam. Ethan's parents still there, young and old. Kids popping each other with those H-E-B sticks. <laughs> Some hitting going Th on thunder, in the stands. Thunder sticks gone, gone wild. Remember when my kids were young, they get thunder sticks to wave behind the basket and then new uh, version of pillow fight. Off to the races. Palomino, will they catch him? No, Renee Palomino from Highlands High School showing everybody what we've seen at Alamo Stadium. 59 yards. Hey, you can put him outside. But this guy does a lot of his work between the tackles. Look at that. Just great vision, unbelievable feet. His ability to change direction. You always see those great guys with speed, the high ankle kicks at the end. Where their ankles are causing friction with their backsides. Picking them up, putting them down, and moving the scoreboard again. Hotchkiss on to kick, I believe, for the 50th time <laughs> Ryan Hotchkiss had one block but been perfect the rest of the time, and Rene Palomino on his horse to pay dirt. Jonathan Handy, shout out to you from McCollum. Nice ceiling block. We're coming back with more from the Dome. 51 to 7 East. You're watching the San Antonio Sports All-Star Football Game presented by AGB. Welcome back. Taking a look at some of the hardware being handed out tonight. We're going to hand the winning coach their champion trophy, and we have our Whataburger Impact Player of the Game. And Renee Palomino making an impact on that last touchdown. 59 yards. 
and you know it's fun to watch Chuck because we call games from all over the area on Hallmark University Thursday Night Lights and I think we even ask ourselves sometimes ah, can this kid in this district play in this district uh oh balls on the ground but Hughes picks it back up or you know, can they play anywhere in town? Do, they, do their talents against this competition cross over to play at the 6A level if they're a 4A player or whatever? Rene Palomino proving today that his talent is as good as it is anywhere in town. And, we, and we've seen it for three years. He's been starring on Thursday Night Lights since he was a sophomore. And I think it's translated very nicely here tonight. Absolutely. As we knew it would. I mean, only 145 pounds. That's why, you know, that's why you ask. But... Let's go down to the sidelines, Mike Hernandez. Yep, speaking of the devil, I've got Rene Palomino, and that was a heck of a run. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. So I got to tell you, man, we watch, you know, we've watched you, uh, Chuck, Don, and I, and, and uh, a couple of years, and we've done a couple of games, and you just keep doing it, man. I, I don't see how you do it, but nobody can catch you. Yes, sir. Uh, I mean, it's, it starts all up front. I mean, the guys, they're big guys. We're going against big guys. We, we worked all week to, you know, to do this, and I'm glad I got one. I, I, that was my goal to get one today. How did it feel playing all week with with some of the best, and, and you're you're among them? How did it feel playing with with other players like that? Uh, I felt blessed. I mean, to be one of the top guys in San Antonio and playing with, you know, big dudes and good. I mean, I, I love competition, <laughs> so I've always played up when I was little, so. I love it. Yes, sir. Well, you, you certainly have impressed us throughout the last few years. And, and uh, again, it's been a pleasure watching you. Good luck in the future. you have any plans for the future? know what you're going to be doing? Uh, hopefully, I get something for college. Uh, I want to go play some football. I, I don't want to stop this. <laughs> again, there's got to be a place for you, man, because young men like you just don't grow on trees. You know yes, what I'm sir. saying? Yes, Good luck. Thank you. God bless. There you go. There you go, Mary Harden Baylor, Shriner, Concordia Lutheran. Trinity, that young man you want on your team. Have him return kick, split him out, give him the football. He's going to make something happen. It's a big league throw by Tyler Vitt, who's taken a beating his last couple of plays. But I'll tell you what, this is another guy to me. It just passes the eye test. Yeah, big, strong, did it all year long. Hits Gotchkis over the middle. He's accurate, you know, I think he's going to get he's going to get even better in college. Going to work on the mechanics a little bit. But you know, you can't coach that arm strength and his ability to make decisions and all that other good stuff. Not to mention he's big. Yeah. D1 commit to Texas State. Double pumps that one and he's brought down good rush from the outside. Fired up about it for the E squad. It was number 40. And that is C.J. Keeler from Smithson Valley. And you see the Ranger fans in attendance. Clock ticks inside three minutes. Good for C.J. Went to high school with his mom. Did you really? Sure did. Hey, speaking of this, you know our MVP is likely going to be Ryan Reddy. Got a, got a text or a tweet from uh, Glenda Linhoff, the stadium named after her and her husband out in... Cibolo, we have a face mask being dropped. And, and she, Glenda weighing in with this nugget of information that Ryan Redding is the grandson of legendary Judson coach Sterling Jeter, who of course was on DW staff. And personal foul, face mask on the defense. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. First coach, down. Coach Jim Rackley's staff and was an athletic coordinator there after Frank Arnold and DW retired. Coach Jeter, one of the great football coaches and track and field coaches this area has ever seen. And Ryan Redding is his grandson, so he comes from good stock. Yeah, I'll say. Thank you, Mrs. Linhoff, for the tip. Vit to Moore. Dancing down to the five yard line. Young man from Warren High School. Really shown some burst here today. Looked good early in the game yeah. and he's still running the ball hard. Mendiola coming up, making a play from his safety possession. Young man out of Pleasanton. Well, that's going to the house. Like all these kids, Don. 
Uniform Czar traded stickers for their helmets. I like that. It's always an all-star game. Reminds me of the Senior Bowl. Mobile. Good penetration that time. Young man from Steele has done a nice job on this drive defensively. I know he got caught for the face mask, but Cedric Hernandez from Wagner is really doing a good job. Well, and you take a look, even on these last couple of runs, I mean, there's guys back there trying to trap Devin Moore, and you can just tell by his ability to move his feet and legs that, you know, there's something there. We saw that, you know, one of the schools that's chasing him is A&M Commerce. And again, that's a program that's done very, very well from guys in our area. How about that? Touchdown catch for the West on the board. Alexander Wise, good for you, young man. He had a tough drop at the other corner of the end zone. And that time, you see why he's being recruited. That kid went up. He's tall, and he's got hops. And that time, he came down with it. One hand. Don't even need the offhand. Look at this. Alexander Wise. Go get you some. Tyler Vett, nice throw as well. You want to make sure that your guy and your guy only. Wise hooking it up and making it happen. Wise, you saw, going to the Air Force, or at least has an offer for them. He's also a basketball player. San Antonio with so many great athletes. Tell me some of the top ones uh, that are not here include Jamel Jeter, who's already signed with Oklahoma State, Brendan Brady, and Caden Stearns had one interception in the first quarter, had another one in the second half. You can see his range. He's committed to Texas, number two safety in the country, and our Jack Green doing a great job photography-wise as Caden's coming right to your living room. Caden Stearns from Steele High School named the U.S. Army All-America Bowl most valuable player today from right here in San Antonio at home. Good for him. Originally committed to LSU, changed to Texas. And boy, the Longhorns have one heck of a defensive back class. His teammate at Steele, Brendan Brady, is committed to Rice. He was a late addition to the West team on the Army All-America Bowl. But Brendan showed up at practice. He was practicing, got home from practice for this game taking a shower and he got a call from the big boy game. And Brennan Brady switched gears and played in the earlier game and did a nice job. Had a couple carries. See the MO on him, all state second team. Smart kid going to Rice, academic all district. Let me tell you something, if you're playing football Rice, yeah. you got something between the ears. You know how to study. And you got gifts. I can study, but I don't have gifts. Congratulations <laughs> to those two. And Karsten Battles from Johnson, Johnson High School, yeah. who won a contest as a deep snapper to get into that game, and also in the last couple of weeks has committed to Oregon. Free ride to snap some deepers. Nice. Good for him. He was a good baseball player, too, so another guy that, you know, wasn't a one-trick pony. Hey, we're finally getting to see Michael Lissy. This is one of my favorite players in all of San Antonio. He's a great kicker. Very consistent out of O'Connor, and you can see he's going to put this one into the end zone. Michael Lissy is a two-time All-State kicker and one of the most accurate guys you'll ever see. Interested to see where he ends up kicking at the next level because he'll get a shot. Right now, it's time for our pick and pull collision of the game. And Chuck, we called his number all day long until he got hurt. And that's Jaime Ramirez. And you can say, you can queue up four or five different hits from this kid today because he was laying the wood all afternoon. Yeah, I mean, just one of those guys is like a heat seeking missile. That he is sees our... the football and he's going to go get you a pick and pull collision of the game. There Probably three or four of them. I know I heard it all the way up here more than a few times as East is content to run this one out probably is we have a collision of the game between two teammates. <laughs> That's what happens when you have a week to practice as far as your spacing goes and that one completed. But Jefferson out of Judson High School is going to say wait a second who got me there was that my own guy? Well, you know, we were talking to Coach Hill earlier, and you heard him tell Mike Hernandez he didn't care what the score was because, you know, he's trying to get a lot of these guys some snaps and some extra chances. 
as you'd hope. I mean, yeah. this is this is going to be the last game for some guys. Yeah. There's scouts in the stands. Marsh bounces outside. Actually, that's Tippins from uh, from Madison on the carry. Also now time for our night office solutions play of the night. And Chuck, this was pretty easy. This is the athletic ability, Trayvon Mayrig Wood. Yeah, just an unbelievable job coming back with the football. Was lined up outside with you know, the inside presence of the DB, and he just cut right in front of him and took it to the house. That's good enough for our office night solutions play of the night. Next stop, TCU. Inside handoff. Brown, Clemens, lassoed down. <laughs> Some guys there, including big number 90, who's had a good game today for the West, Ernest Hernandez from South Sand. Yeah, guys still getting after it, and they're all laughing about it, too, because they're playing whistle to whistle and maybe just a tick beyond it. A little pile-on shot there at the end. No autopsy, no foul, as they say. Ernest Hernandez, six foot 300. He takes up some space on the nose there. Second and long, keeping it to the outside. Another good collision. Nice run as 19 meets 19. Mason Pierce and Vincent Taylor from the lead colliding. That'll do it. Come to zeros, and the East runs away with a dominant performance, 51 to 14. When we come back, we'll hand out the hardware, our championship trophy, and our Whataburger Impact Player of the Game. Stay with us. We'll be right back. This is the San Antonio Sports All-Star Football Game presented by H-E-B Post Game Show. Welcome back to the Alamo Dome. Time to hand out the hardware. Let's go down to the field. Both teams down there and our Mike Hernandez. Mike? All right, ladies and gentlemen, how about a hand for both teams? Just an outstanding effort tonight. A lot of talent out there. Um, again, we want to congratulate both coaches. Where's... Where's our coaches over here? Keith Kaiser from the West, and of course, Coach Hill from the, from the East team. Congratulations on, on an outstanding game. Before we do the presentation of the Champions Trophy, I'd like to do your impact, your Whataburger impact player of the game. Son, you had a pretty good game. <laughs> How about a hand? Before I present this to you, let me tell you, you went 14 for 16, 256 yards, two touchdowns passing. You also had two touchdowns rushing, so you totaled almost 300 yards total offense and four TDs. How about that? Not a bad, uh, not a bad evening. Huh? Just give a big, big round of applause. Ryan Redding, your Whataburger Impact Player of the game. Congratulations. Well, what do you think? Done without my receivers, my O line, especially the receivers making plays, made it easy for me. Yeah, you threw the ball pretty well, too. <laughs> Hard to miss those guys running down the field. So, what are your plans, son, after this? Uh, I'll just go to school. I'm not really sure yet. You're not really sure yet, so you're still weighing your options? Uh, yes, sir. Well, I'm sure after watching uh, some of the scouts watching you all today, uh, you're going to be hearing, uh, your phone's going to be ringing off the hook. I hope so. Yes, sir. Well, congratulations. How about a hand for Ryan Redding from New Braunfels High School, your Whataburger Impact Player of the Game. All right, I'd like to introduce from the East team from Smithson Valley, Coach Larry Hill, Coach, congratulations. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to congratulate the West and their players for playing their guts out, our kids, and congratulate the high school coaches in San Antonio for having their players uh, play at such a high level that they could come to a game like this and in a week's time put on this good a show. That's a tribute to football in San Antonio. Yes, it is, and it's a tribute uh, to what you do as an individual coach and to all the coaches in, in the San Antonio area. Well, thank you, and thanks to all our guys on our football team. We decided early in the week we want to go out and try to win the game, and they did just that. Good job, guys. Out of way to go. All right, so Russ, Russ Bookbinder, from San Antonio Sports. 
make the presentation to you for the Champions Trophy for the 40th annual George Pastor Championship Trophy today. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. All right, that wraps it up. And again, be safe. Thank you all very much. And we'll send it back. All right, thanks, Mike. Coach Hill and the East squad victorious in a dominant 51 to 14 game. Time for our iDreamSA.com highlights. Ryan Redding, your Whataburger impact player of the game, as Mike said, fantastic running and throwing tonight. He had two touchdowns in the game rushing. And then how about the young men from Highlands High School? Palafos scored running the football. The East continued to dominate. And then Palomino, his teammate, off to the races for 59 yards as the East continued to run up and down the field. The West did get on the board late in the game. Nice one-handed catch by Alexander Wise, and those are iDreamSA.com highlights. All right, as we take a look at our final stats, the East dominating the scoreboard and the stat board as well. Rushing yards, 220, a lot of those coming on Palomino's gallop at the end. Passing yards, closing in on 300 yards there. Total yards clearly in favor of the East. And again, Don, both of these teams, and you can tell, both of them well coached. I mean, I think we only had 10 penalties in this game and two turnovers. It's a pretty good game all the way around. Enjoyed it. It was lopsided, but we got to see the best in San Antonio. And, you know, the kids have had a great week, making new friends, practicing. And really, this is for seniors, you know, all the hard work they put in. And as we talked about earlier in the game, Keith Kaiser's telling them right now, hey, you're the best of the best. Your coach has nominated you not only for your talents and abilities, but for the young type of young men that you are. Character matters for both of these coaches. Larry Hill talked about it. They came to practice with character. They competed with character all over the city of San Antonio. What a great thing to see. East side, west side, north side, south side all come together, practice for a week, make new friendships and a lot of these guys hopefully will be noticed and have another chance to play at the next level. We've enjoyed bringing it to you all season long on Thursday Night Lights. We're looking forward to next season as well. For Chris Kotfus, who worked so hard to produce this, Brian Watts as well in the truck, a cast of thousands. For Mark Kusenberger, our statistician extraordinaire up here in the booth. For Mike Hernandez, down on the field. And my broadcast partner, Chuck Mikatenik. It's a lot of football we called this year, partner, UTSA and TNL. We look forward to doing it again next year. Thank you for watching. This has been a presentation of Sinclair San Antonio, KMYS, the CW35.